And hello, everybody. I hope the mic is working. Okay, my mic is working. Hi, everybody. It looks like Chris is working, too, and I think Ray's hello, mic is everyone. working. Hi, everybody. Talk to us one, too. Yeah. Ray, you've got to be, you've got to do everything in mime for for the whole first oh, 10, cool, 15 cool, cool. minutes just to really throw <laughs> Ruel off. I'm in a box. Yeah. How's the mic thing? Like, you're in a box or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to everyone in the chat. Thank you for joining us, folks. This is the r and pre-show uh we'll be recording uh a new top 12 list with richard uh in just a moment but first we get to hang out with you all fine folks so thank you so much for joining us uh we do this well we've been doing it weekly for the last month or so normally we, we have, have. Like, in between weeks so this has been great weekly. uh We're but we will be taking them out yeah, we'll be taking a week <laughs> off uh, next week, um, and then our schedule is still in a little flux right now, but I will be back by myself next week, folks. We're going to do uh, pull a video from the vault, and we'll talk about that uh, next week. But that's in the future. We're in the present. Let's live in the moment here. Um, Ray and Chris, how the heck are y'all doing? Oh, I'm doing okay. <laughs> I'm doing good. I was telling... Uh, Chris and Roll that I have some some stressful personal life stuff <laughs> happening today. Good, good stressful stuff. But if I seem like I'm darting around anxiously, I'm fine. I promise. Um, but no, I've been good. We also had um, a pseudo game launch today, which was exciting. Oh. Um, we are helping bring the tiny epic Game of Thrones game to retail, which so that's launching on Kickstarter now. But we helped with the the licensing of that, and then we're going to be helping bring that to retail. So it's not really our game launch but it's still an, an exciting thing to to be a part of and stuff so oh, check out that kickstarter that's that cool. launched this morning yeah i had no idea that the office was involved with that i that's, remember that's I, on kickstarter right now yeah yep. I, i'm a big fan of the tiny epic series and i you know i remember we're hearing how when they got the game mm -hmm. of thrones license and i was so to me that's just yeah. it just blows me away that they got that so that's cool that the office uh, yeah that's where we come that. in we help with like licensing and and stuff like that and i know richard i think put up a couple videos this morning i think he did like the yep. the run through um and final thoughts on the game so yeah. yeah we had we got to have a small 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 part of that and then we're gonna step in later when it comes to retail time but nice. yeah it's that's pretty exciting i haven't been i haven't even been like adjacent to a kickstarter in a really long time so mm -hmm. i like to be in this seat of being like go guys go but like not having to be in the trenches of the kickstarter comments right. very nice position to be in because my some of my previous jobs i used to work um exclusively with kickstarter campaigns and anyone yep. who's worked anywhere near a kickstarter campaign knows it's very very stressful so i enjoy being on the the sidelines for this yeah um, yeah so no yeah. stress so it, you just get to yeah. I'm in none of the stress right now so that's nice cool. nice yeah i got I so excited i had to leave oh uh nice to have you back chris oh welcome yeah <laughs> uh so yeah tiny epic uh uh game of thrones um i haven't watched the video yet but yes i just dropped the link in uh chat folks you can check out richard's Thank run through you. there uh also got a couple of things going on as well we have uh the eternaut um i did that run through and it just went up yesterday that's also launching on kickstarter today i had no idea before i did the run through but the eternaut is this apparently this really well-renowned comic book series uh from huh. argentina and it's got this whole post-apocalyptic cool. world thing going. Um, I'm not going to get into spoilers. I'll just leave it at that. You can look it up online, folks. But check out the video for sure. It's really, really cool game. Um, what about you, Chris? Uh, anything uh, new in your world in the room and board? Um, I, I feel like I see a new room and board video every other day. It's like I <laughs> my notifications always <laughs> pop up in uh, That's YouTube. good. I'm glad. Because <laughs> if you weren't watching, Ruel, it would all be for nothing. <laughs> 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 now I know. I finally made it. <laughs> You have. I watch it constantly, my friend. <laughs> uh, it's good. I'm back in the in the room. I'm back in the board. I'm back in Toronto. Um, just finished the drive back for the last couple of days. Uh, we drove from Nova Scotia, where I was doing a show, and uh, now we're back in Toronto for like I don't know, seven weeks. And then I go back to Nova Scotia to do another couple of shows. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, and then and then that'll take me to August, and then a little Vegas. For World Series will be in September, and then who knows what'll happen in October? Maybe I'll get to get to go back to Toronto again. But it's nice; to, it's really nice to be home. Uh, to I'm looking up at my my game shelves, and it's nice Aww. to Aww. it's nice to see all my beautiful little treasures that uh, I couldn't bring with me. And I'm also already just like 
booked beyond belief in terms yeah. of like trying to see people and trying to play as many oh, games God. with people as as i can right i'm like yes yeah. i want to do a game night with you and with you and with you i'm like oh no all my nights are gone <laughs> oh no <laughs> just and like that the... when i when i work so we'll see how that works um <laughs> But it's it's nice. It's nice to be back. I got uh, I had Dragon Bond Lords of Vala um, waiting for me in the mail. Nice, uh, which I which I backed on Kickstarter way way back in their like first campaign. I just got a no- notification today that they're they have another campaign right now. I was like, oh cool. Oh, cool. Um, so so that so that was cool because uh, I played it once so far. My phone is buzzing because I'm a bad streamer. Uh, I played it <laughs> once so far, uh, and not this copy, but somebody else's copy. And and it was it was good. Uh, I I'm excited to play it more. I it, it's a team game, and it pretends it isn't a team game, mm-hmm. but it's it's a team game. It's a game where it's like the the hook was oh at some point in time if you guys end up in the same uh, they're dragons and they're like soldiers, and so if you if a soldier ends up in the same space as a dragon, they both roll a dice and they see if they like unify together and become a team. And I was like, okay. oh, I really like this tension of like maybe we become a team or maybe we don't. Uh, but it seems like you can kind of force that teamship upon somebody, and it'll mm. gen like at least in the one game that I played, it feels like it'll generally happen. And so, so that was like a little, it knocked it down a bit for me in terms of excitement mm. uh, because I was like, oh, I, I liked there being this tension, but I might just house rule, rule it to make it a little bit more difficult to actually become a team Oh, uh, okay. because that's, that's something that I, that I was excited about and, and, and wanted. And so we'll see, we'll see, but, but it was a really good Kickstarter deal. Like yeah. you got, you got a whole extra box of stretch goals where they made their own war game out of the additional like mini so you basically got two games oh, cool. uh, that's cool. and they're just like they're like here's here's your stretch goals oh by the way all of these figures we've also created like a war game for it nice. and i was like it was one of the best value kickstarters that that i have still seen and looking at every kickstarter campaign over the last like three <laughs> years um yeah it's it was like a really good good value game in terms of like the amount of stuff that you got and so i'm hoping i'm hoping that it can you know can stick around in the collection so i'm excited about that nice. and then tonight I'm going out. I've already arranged. I, I couldn't stay away from board game Facebook. I'm getting <laughs> Pandemic Legacy Season Not Zero. Not board game Facebook. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> I'm, season I'm Zero. You, can't, nice. you yeah. can't outrun board game Facebook. It finds I know. You. Well, it was too good a deal. It was 30 bucks. Somebody was selling an intrink copy That's... of Pandemic Legacy Season Zero really? for 30 bucks. That's okay. a and I'm like, nice. yeah. I'm like, you know what? That'll Dang. go perfectly Dang. beside my unopened copy of Season 2 <laughs> and my half-played <laughs> copy of Season 1. I'm like, it's just, it's, it's a must-have. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. So I'm going to pick that up tonight as well. I, I really like Season Zero, and this is me saying yeah. I, I played exactly two games of Season Zero, and <laughs> mine is also sitting on the shelf. But it was great. I really enjoyed yeah. one. But it's one of those things like, I, do I, I, you could technically solo it, but it's, an, you know, those type of games, I yeah. think it's just better with more people, that experience yeah. of a legacy game. But yeah. yeah. 30 yeah. bucks is a yeah. steal, though, man. 30 bucks. I mean, how could I not? How could I know? Yeah. I know I, I love season one so much. Yeah. And and that's what I'm primarily trying to really book in while I'm here is we're going to friggin' finish season one. We stopped before the pandemic. <laughs> that tells you how long ago it happened. It was four years ago. Um, <laughs> You've sat through an actual pandemic and now you're going back through to through an game. actual pandemic and now we're going to go back and we're going to friggin' finish it that's over sure. my dead body. And I don't care what... <laughs> What a, you know you said you've been seeing lots of room and board videos get ready for those to stop for a while because I got other, I got other things to do That's it. oh I love it um, you know, yeah, I was gonna oh sorry go ahead no Paul. go ahead Ray go ahead I, I got, go ahead I was gonna say because we were talking about this when Richard got back from his travels like games that you're most like excited to come home to I was gonna mm. ask if you had one of those and if the answer is just the new in shrink pandemic that you bought that's fine <laughs> but that's what I well, was gonna ask well, you is if is, there's a game is. you're like oh I missed you I couldn't take you with me like is there a game that stuck out to you like that mm, that's good yeah that's a good question because basically what I brought with me was, was stuff that I needed to review right so it was a sure, lot of the stuff sure. that I picked up from PAX that mm-hmm. I still have like review obligations for and now that I'm back home, I'll be able to get through and and actually have a better setup for filming that stuff. I was planning yeah. on filming that while away, and it just never really happened because of you know space constraints. Being away, mm-hmm. yeah. Being away, I always like, think I can film stuff in other locations, yeah. and then it comes down to it. I'm like, you just mm-hmm. can't. It's just it's not. Just you so get hard. in such a rhythm in the space that yeah. you yep. normally exist in. So I can't. So true. Yeah. 
So, so I, I primarily brought, brought that and that, not that those aren't fun. Like a lot of them are really good and we'll be staying in the collection for sure, yeah. but it's, they feel more sort of like work driven. Um, so yeah. one thing I'm excited to, to do pandemic legacy. I've been trying to yeah. organize that. It feels like we're all like on board in terms of like schedule. We could maybe yeah. make that happen. Uh, another thing is, Oh, another one that I bought, I guess I've been buying a lot of games recently. <laughs> oh, I got to stop. Cause I just backed something on Kickstarter, like right before I jumped on this as well. Um, I don't know what's happened to me. Uh, well, I backed that one because somebody made a donation. Um, cause I, in my crowdfunding countdown, I made a joke that there were uh, sorely lacking games that, that featured clowns. And then there was a game that had a clown like little meeple in it. I was like, are you kidding me? This like one off joke happened. And then somebody, and I was like, ah, it's probably too, it's like, it's too expensive. I can't justify it. And somebody like chipped in 20 bucks. It was like for the clown game. And I was like, oh, well, well now I have to do it. Now you have to. <laughs> because, nice. you, because you help, you paid for the shipping for me. And like, that, oh, what, what sort of person really would I be? If right. I yeah. if I didn't do that, I you can't give it back. You pocketed that clown money. What kind of person yeah. would you be? I, I, I would. I, I I'm a lot of things. You know, I've done a lot of horrid deeds in my life, but <laughs> never have I once pocketed clown money. And I'm not going to start now. Um, and then and then the other thing that I bought is because I was doing um, I was doing my top my, my top games like as a death match. Like we always have a a, a board game tournament on our on our Discord. Mm -hmm. uh, every and they were ranking my favorite games and so like, i've only ever like done my top 20 games as like a list and i'll probably extend that as as you know moving forward uh and do you know top 50 eventually get to top 100 but mm -hmm. um uh, uh, grand austria hotel was one of those games which was on the list it was like number 30 and i really enjoy it i don't own a copy of it uh and it's just at my friend's house and it's one of those things where my, my girlfriend will play it with me as well and I was buying my parents a couple expansions for Ticket to Ride because they wanted to have they wanted to play Ticket to Ride with six people, and mm -hmm. you can only do that with the Asia expansion. Mm -hmm. And now the Old West expansion as well has six mm -hmm. players, which I didn't know until I looked it up. Um, and so I I just bought those for them, and I was like, okay, I was sending you those things, and I needed to spend an extra sixty five dollars to get free shipping, right? To save ten dollars. Yeah. So I had to spend <laughs> the sixty five dollars to save ten dollars. That's just math, okay? I'm sure everybody who's watching will agree with why math. It's that, just that's math. totally board it's, game it's, math. It's right board. There. It's board yeah. game math. Hundred yeah. percent. <laughs> yeah, I love so, it. So I guess I, so. I'm really excited for like my parents are coming this weekend, and they're going to be bringing that and. uh because I had it shipped to their to their house, so I'm I'm excited to play that as nice. well. Nice, that's so cool. I, know, I, I love all the games. I'm getting to a point where <laughs> where I've purged enough that my games on my shelf, I love them all. You know, that's oh, good. That's, that's a good feeling. Yeah, that's that's purge huge. until you feel that way. Yeah, that's, that's my. Oof. I've got to you purge. Get to it, Ray. Soon, I yeah. know you don't purge. But no, you gotta, uh, no, I don't want. You got to do it. <laughs> it does feel good. I'm just like, I'm so scared of like purge regret i'm so mm -hmm. i'm so scared of it and i was i was thinking as you were talking i was like oh that'd be such a great topic right like games we purge that we regret and then i was like mm -hmm. and i will sit and listen because <laughs> i don't have it because i'm i'm scared i'm a little scaredy cat and so i just don't purge at all <laughs> but you know what's you know what's really cool there are mm -hmm. these things that exist called board game stores I know, and they but, will but, they will happily take the, your like, money no, in exchange what if it's the one where i like wrote in the rules or something like it has like a the guy actually oh. ripped a card and it's sentimental okay. or like yeah that's fine then something. then you then you don't get rid of those but have you written that... in every single rule book in no your... there no. You go. so that narrows no, it down just... right like completely fine completely fine don't get rid of anything that has that sentimental where you've written it somebody somebody uh what about the score pads yeah like, you... i, I want to look through pads. and see i you know, i okay i want to pull in chat Who's take... a score pad hoarder? Because I am. I and every single score pad that I've done, and it's in the box. So I can be like, oh. on June third, twenty eighteen, who won this game between <laughs> me and my mom? And I get luck. But you know what I... would be even what would be even cooler, right? Is <laughs> if you me, took all of those cooler? score pads and you made a scrapbook out of them, so that you <gasps> had like an awesome representation of all the memories that keeps all the memories that you need. You no longer need to keep hold of the game because you have that memory in scrapbook coffee table form. That's actually a sort of that's cool actually idea, Chris. really cute. I, like I actually that, yeah. really, really. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said there's an app for that, Ray. It's not the same, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not the same. I do actually. That's actually really, really cute for games that I've been playing for. Like, you, like my copy of Seven Wonders. I like. Oh yeah. I oh, desperately yeah. want the nice gold foil Seven Wonders. That like 
the deluxe edition that they came out with but i'm like but my original one has yeah. got this ancient score pad that i've been like working on getting all the way through for years and years and it has like old you games can, from back when my brother lives with take me it out and, of like, the box and that's actually <laughs> i shut up <laughs> i do kind of like that though for games that have like like oh i kind of it's kind of fun that's actually that really lovely. cute I think yeah. that would be awesome. Like and then if you have it as like a nice, like, you know, you nobody has a photo album, have photo albums anymore, but yeah. Now yeah. you can yeah. have I that. Do. I do. I, lo I love physical media is like my favorite thing. Yeah. I, I like keep up with photo albums and stuff. Not still many people, day. I should say. I should yeah. Say. yeah. But I yeah. kind of like the idea of doing that with score pads. I think that I do too. Really, I think it's a great idea. And that actually, could be really cute. Yeah. When, when Chris start for t first started talking about it, I thought you were going to say, hey, you should make a quilt. Of your score pads, but yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You could do that too. You could for sure do that too. I, I, no, I, I had the idea of, of the quilt. I think you read my mind, Ruel, like because I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking quilt, you know, you, how you take those images and like a lot of people create them, but like, yeah, who, nobody's got the sewing skills for that. Yeah, that, that's but we just can crazy at talk. least get some glue or tape and put yeah. it into a binder. No, I, I really I, like that. I and do like Dino that. Dino says it should be called the Tomb of Lost Scores. Yeah. I, I love that's that. Great. I think that's. Oh, yeah. I love Even better, that. a shirt. Yeah, until you get until you go out in the rain, and then, it's just <laughs> then it's like, oh well. All the paper. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, but you can share the one time you beat Ruel out something with the BGG world. Yeah, uh, that that would be uh, a lot of fun. <laughs> Cosmic beat. Hi, welcome, uh, welcome everyone. It's, thanks for uh, hanging out with us as we do the pre-show. We're gonna do something different as well during the pre-show, folks. Uh, we've been playing Gark Show the last couple of uh, episodes. Wanted to change it up today. We are gonna be doing some board game trivia. So stick around for that. We're gonna do that mm -hmm. just a few moments. Uh, again, thanks to Ray for the awesome idea. I'm so excited about this. And I, I we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we're gonna see. <laughs> I, and... I came up with all of these in like a fever episode last night when you were like, "Yes, let's do trivia." And I was like, "Okay." I'm going to do this. I feel compelled to come up with all of these right now. And so we'll, I haven't looked at them since like oh, cool. 1130 nice. last night. So. I hope, I hope the answers are also wrong. I hope they're, oh, I, can't, I cannot <laughs> wait for the corrections in the comments about how they're no, wrong. I think that would be, it, it doesn't matter what the answer is. Like whatever your answer is, is correct. It doesn't yes. matter if there's a difference. I, I'm, we're wholeheartedly behind you. <laughs> oh totally it's like that game uh I, that's not a hack you just that. you just have to bluff your way through it you know you say it with enough confidence and exactly. people will believe you yeah oh. chicken says uh, it's been forever since a ray trivia game oh cool yeah i used to run a ton of we were talking about this a little bit before the stream but i used to run a ton of trivia back when i used to run the check games edition twitch channel we hmm. used to run like hyper specific check games trivia nights oh, okay. um, and i would build up a whole a whole deck for it and everything and one of our mods came up with a system where you could vote in chat like it would read chat and it would keep track of your score automatically for you so if people if people like this we can like we can amp up the production value on board game trivia but we like it yeah. um, we, like we it decided already. to do this last night so i didn't have time to put any of that together but yeah um, right everything that you do i like <laughs> And agree everything Chris? that you like i like everything that you don't like i don't like okay that's, that's my yeah, official yeah. stance and i want it to be known all right oh i love it uh, dino says i don't care about keeping score pads but i'm a arm swipe everything loosely into the box kind of monster wow wow okay, sorry, you don't dino. mean that like yeah. you don't mean that yeah, that is that's bait you know that you know the gift of, of, yeah. of Tom Hardy going. That's bait. Yeah, totally. no, that's bait. Yep. I don't believe you exist. You seem like too nice a person, Dino, <laughs> to to be that sort of sinister monster. That is, uh, oh man, that pretty scary we're stuff. Have to call the cops on. <laughs> where do you where do you guys fall on the on the organ? I want to make like an alignment chart for how you organize your board games. That's like chaotic yeah. neutral to like lawful good or whatever. Where do you fall on the spectrum? Because I feel like. The, the chaotic evil is the arm swipe into the box. That is like, yeah. that's chaotic evil. Then one notch over is maybe like organizing loosely, right? So yeah. like, you know, separating them if there's some sort of insert, but not bagging them, right? The okay. next one is you just use the plastic bags that come in the game. Then like the next one is maybe you buy like a dedicated insert for games that have them. Like, yeah. where do you, for, where are you on the spectrum? For me, it depends on the situation. So if I'm mm. just playing games like at uh, home or game night, I tend to be lawfully good. Like I, mm -hmm. you know, 
organize everything. Like I will, I'm the type of guy I buy, like, I don't actually buy inserts. I'll buy like extra baggies or like, uh, from the, um, uh, the dollar store or whatever. The little yeah, plastic yeah. containers. Dollar tree, one dollar, the little bins. Yep. That's the, those are that's perfect. And I'm all about player baggies. So every player, whatever they're starting resources or things are, everyone gets a baggie and that's, it's labeled. I'm, that's, trying, to say, be, the correct, I'm trying to be that's better the like answer. you. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying. I, I do Ugh. that. I do that because of the group that I'm in. They're really good about, uh, like, whenever we all play a game, at the end, everyone just does it naturally. Like, hey, we're going to, you know, bag everything nice. up. And it's a really great group of friends that I have and family as well. Now, having said that, if I'm streaming or whatever, I'm the arm swipe type of guy. I'm like, get it off my oh table. Oh, my God. I'll deal with it later. I'm going to leave it me. that way. Yeah. I totally. think that's what it was. I used to be so meticulous with my games. Not, I was never a go to buy inserts person because I was poor and in college when I got into the hobby. So right. like that was never an ingrained thing for me. Yeah. But I was always a bag it up nicely person. Then I started streaming games on Twitch and it, it ruined me. I, I, I'm not yeah. sure I ever quite became the arm swipe person, but after some streams where I'm just like, I'm done. Yeah. Put it all in the box. It's, yeah, I'll deal with it later. <laughs> yeah. And then two weeks yeah. later you find it, it's like, oh, now I got to work. And you're like, oh, stuff. crap. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I like you to- deal with it later, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. What was that? But totally. generally you deal with it later. Right, right. I would never just like leave it. But I try to, a lot of games come with like extra baggies or I'm like, on what planet am I using all of these? So I have a, a dedicated shelf in my <laughs> Calyx downstairs that I keep all the bags that don't really need to be in those other games. And then I just pull those out when a game comes with too few bags. So yeah. that's yeah. my That's, that's, that's my also system. the correct answer. Yeah. That, that yeah. is. I think every game. Because I'm not going out and buying more like little plastic baggies feels wrong to me when so many games like overpopulate their boxes with them. So that's yeah. so far that's worked out for me. I have a relatively small collection cause I live in a small house. Um, but so far that's worked for me. Luckily. I, I, I feel really bad when I buy baggies because I do like, um, I, we have a Daiso uh, store near us. So the mm -hmm. Daiso baggies, I swear they're like next level, like the quality they're like a little Ooh. thicker. So they're really, cause I have a problem. Like I'll just open plastic bags and I'll just tear them in half. It's because I'm so strong uh, that just. Oh, right. Of I, course. I've yeah. always known that. You know, you know, uh, you know all about that, Chris. Um, so yeah. the Daiso ones I, are a little extra thicker and they're easier to write on with a Sharpie. So, which I love because mm. I, I, I label, I try to label everything like, That's huge. Hey, here's food tokens or here's, you know, bricks or whatever. Oh, but. wow. Yeah. You yeah. are you are lawful good, Ruel. Oh yeah. my goodness. Well, when that I'm not is... streaming, I'm lawful good. When I'm streaming yeah. chaotic evil, for sure. Oh. I'll say I'll say this. Uh, I mean, I have I have one of the best videos, like the best performing videos on my channel. It's one of the videos that I did like very very early on in, is like how to make the perfect insert for a game. Oh, um, okay. With just foam core, and it's cheap because you know I'm super cheap. Yeah, you yeah. can do it with just foam core, an exacto knife, and a glue gun. That's it. Yeah, it's super easy, super easy to do. Um, and and so ever since I started doing that, like the the best way to or to put away a game is a is a way that optimizes setup. So so Agreed. every totally. game yep. that totally. I have, like the the board should be on top. It should be at the very top mm -hmm. of the box because that's mm -hmm. the first thing that you pull out and you put a new setup, right? So every mm -hmm. every game that I have, I try to optimize in terms of the order at which the pieces come out, uh, Smart. because then wow. that can yeah. you spend more time more time playing the games. Uh, and then also my other general rule that I've like that I feel very passionate about is that baggies are great for player pieces, but for any resources, those are bins. Uh, so any like anything that is like a common supply, yep. it needs to be in a bin because you're not pulling it all out. If it's player pieces, boom, you pass it out, dump. Everybody organizes all their trains, whatever. Their 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 Catan pieces doesn't matter. They're anachrony workers. Who cares? Mm -hmm. But like everybody can do that on their on their own time. And then if it's just like common resources, then you should have like a little bin uh, or like a, a multiple bins with with lids and whatever, so you can just put them out, open them up have them on the table, people can reach. And then when you put them back to the bank, they go right back into the, into that bin and then you pull them back. Right. Yeah. So that's, those, that that's like a huge rule that I now try to follow. Cause I did have a whole bunch of bags and I found that I wasn't using bags as frequently because there's so mm. many common supply pieces. Yes. I had like, yeah. I had, I had like five different sizes of bags and like I had a small and then like medium, small, medium, medium, <laughs> large, and then large. And I had those all like labeled so that you can just like pull them out for depending upon the number, like the size of resource that you have. I, I, I love, I love I just, storage and organization. I, I I'm just going to say, I love hours. this conversation so much. I'm like amongst my people right now. This is like, so this is so we're all the same way. Like I love this. That's amazing. Uh, now, now one I, thing I am, 
I am Rawls says, how much is enough foam core, foam core for one game? It depends. But you yeah. can just get like a big old sheet. At, like if you're in Canada, I find them at the Dollarama and they're really... The um, Dollarama? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Is that Canadian dollar store? Yeah. Well, there's a there's a few dollar stores. Yeah. Dollar, Dollarama is, is a Canadian Never dollar store. That sounds um, cool. I only recently learned that Canada is actually real, so you know. Yeah, it's. I still haven't learned that, to be honest. Uh, I'm still hoping. I'm still hoping I'm real. Um, uh, yeah, I think. I think like it depends on the game, but like one or two sheets should be more than enough. Like mm. if you just and and just start with making like just different size boxes. Another tip. I mean, like I can. Uh, anyway, another tip is to is to if you're designing an insert, make sure that's flush with the lid. Because if it's flush with the lid, mm. then if you have open bins, you have more flexibility with those those open bins, and they won't pour out uh, yeah. like when you take them off. Because I store right. everything vertically as well uh, mm-hmm. instead of horizontally, and so like having that everything being flush with the lid is super huge for traveling. You're able to pull it out like because I take mm-hmm. my games to a lot of people as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I hate games that necessitate horizontal, um, or, yeah, storage. yeah, horizontal storage. Yeah, yeah. I agree. <sighs> Same. Yeah. But I just go, I just go womp womp, and then I just do it. But I like that you've actually engineered. I'm like, oh man, that yeah. sucks. Now I have this one Calyx shelf that's not like the others, and I have to group it with other ones that are like that. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. That's smart. That's smart. <laughs> oh, I love it. What a good, this is great. Why don't we? Um, so again, friends, thank you for hanging out with us. Be sure if you would yeah. like to subscribe to support the channel, uh, you can do that with an Amazon Prime account for free. You get all kinds of goodies, including a special secret Rado playlist, which I just sent out to a bunch of subscribers. Uh, Richard does this every month where he puts together about 20 videos and uh, those are only viewable by subscribers to the channel. And you can do that for free here on uh, with Amazon Prime. You also get a discount on Rado merch. So feel free to uh, support the channel that way. And and um, yeah, I'm I, I'm now thinking about all my storage issues that I have with certain games here. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go through my games again, and and because uh, I've never thought about the whole. It's funny, uh, Chris. I never thought about the whole like taking out the board first. I always put my yeah. board on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it totally it, makes it revolutionized. It's so, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it really changed. It really changed my whole like view of things. I was always yeah. bored at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, it's so secure. Can't smush the pieces. Yep. Right. But yeah. then, but then you realize, oh no, it's actually okay. And then, like the first thing you do when you, when then when you're setting up a game is pull it out, boom, it's on the table. And then yeah. you can sort through your, you yeah. get so much more space. Um, and that's why the only game that I think is is swipe it all into the box, uh, and is the best way to store that game is patchwork. Other than the buttons, huh. oh yeah, because yeah. you swipe it all into the box, and then for setup, you dump it out. <laughs> that's and so it into yeah. the Oh, boom, I love done, it. Like ready to go. Yeah. Like, so that's. That's the that's my favorite part about patchwork is that it is just pack it in, <laughs> slop it out. You're ready to do another yeah. game. Well, yeah. well, now I got to go throw away the insert that I bought for a patchwork. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Oh no, <laughs> that's true. I just I'm here I'm here to ruin all of your games for a while. Classic swipe and dump games. Well yeah. done. Yeah. I know. yeah. Um, hey, this has been fun, but let's. I, I want to get into more fun uh, with y'all. That's Why true. We do some board game trivia, Ray. I'm excited let's to hear Ray's questions. Say it. I'm nervous. I have a question I, that, that I just means... opened this up for the first time since last night, so. <laughs> and it's all. It's just in a different language. Yeah, no, it's just windings. Uh, yeah. I can't understand any of this. I was oh in a fugue gosh. state when I wrote these. <laughs> just windings. Oh, the best font. <laughs> can you imagine can you imagine i want to i want to meet somebody who knows how to who's fluent in wingdings that would be amazing yeah it's like oh hi triangle circle you know <laughs> asterisk <laughs> oh my god um okay so we're gonna play some some board game trivia these range from um kind of guess a number you're never gonna like know the most people aren't gonna know the real number and i'm gonna just give the i don't know the gold star to whoever gets the closest maybe we'll do prices right rules like closest Without going over, there'll be a couple of those that's just like educated best guess. There's a couple of like actual general board game knowledge questions. And then there's a couple of goofy ones. And that's it. There's no system. We're just gonna, I'm gonna pose some questions to Chris and Ruel and also to chat. Um, And again, I'll be just awarding, I don't know, gold stars. If you in chat want to keep track of the ones that you get right, um, I think that'd be fun. I'll probably let chat, give chat a couple seconds before Chris and Ruel Mm -hmm. jump in just because there's a delay. So feel free to write your answers in chat test your own knowledge we're just we're just uh trying out some other fun things for this opening segment and again if people like this i can like really go out on like real nice production value board game trivia but this was just again fugue state last night i was like you know it'd be really fun 
uh, this. So that's what we're going <laughs> to be think, doing today. I think put chat, put all of your most unreasonable trivia demands into the chat <laughs> yeah, and yeah. say it's a necessity and, I'm and a Ray will pleaser. make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Ray. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I uh, like I like stuff like this. I love it. Um, wits and wagers rules. I'm trying to think. What are the wits and rage, wagers rules? Um, God, I oh, I think you just bet on forever. you just bet on if. Yeah. Who, who's oh, closest. that'd be fun sometime yeah. to like make a wits and wagers game that's all board game yeah. trivia. Like yeah. you could, yeah, you may not know the answer, but you could bet on who you think is the, got the right answer. Yeah. So it'd right. be like my answer, Ruel's answer, and the first answer in chat. Yep. Ooh. And then, and then uh, you you bet on what's closest as well. Yep. That's fun. I will. I will bank that high effort idea and <laughs> probably make that happen at some point because that sounds like a lot of fun uh dino gorgi says i want all the questions google translated through five languages and then back to english yeah it'll be something like that yes <laughs> that, but only questions about um scholars of the south tigris oh, oh my yes, gosh of course, yeah of course. <laughs> um all right so question number one for chat and chris and ruel question number one how many dice are included with the game Sagrada. Base game Sagrada, how many little tiny translucent dice does the game come Sagrada. with? And I will uh, give chat the first, yeah. like, I'll chat, I'll go ahead, this, drop this, your guesses down. This was the example question that Ray gave to us uh, mm -hmm. last night. And, Hopefully you didn't and, look it up like I told you. And then you Ray said, do. don't look it up. I did not look it up. However, I, I have been thinking about it nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> um, until until right now. So I do just want to preface that I know the correct answer, guaranteed, locked mm -hmm. in with with all every amount of logic. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of dice in that game. I know how there's many a lot dice, of are dice. In it, and I also yeah. know how many of every color because uh -huh, that's what helped uh -huh. me get it. Oh, <laughs> so there. I'm are... I'm gonna be so impressed if you get this, but I'm also not gonna believe you because you have had. Ample time to look it up. Well, no, I didn't. I, <laughs> and you get this right, it's it null and void. <laughs> I, okay, you know what? I'm going to make it one dice less. So you <laughs> there, you go, there, there you go. There you go. There you go. So we have some We have some guesses from chat. We have Cosmic Beat guess 50. Um, Fawn guessed 42. Chicken guessed 13. Dark said 50. Dino Corgi said 90. Bing, welcome on in. Bing says 130. John says 80. And Dino Corgi is doing some math, uh, which I appreciate, but I'm not going to say out loud to give any hints to Chris and Ruel. John's, Chris and Ruel, John's you have right. Your... Because it's, you have to have, yeah, it's it's exactly 80 because you need, you, there's five, it's a five by five four colors. grid and there's four players. And if you play a four huh. player game, uh, the dice are done by the, by the oh no, but whoa, no, but no. there's, there's uh, 10 rounds. There's 10 rounds. There's an extra dice. So, so it is 90. 90. Ooh, is, that your fi is that your final answer? Yeah. Wow, I think you're really, really wow, you and your really math skills. One. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, 90 sounds right. Yeah, All right. I, th I thought there were 18 of every color. Like, that was just my gut that was 18 of every color. And I was like, oh, 16 of every cover color seems not enough, especially yeah. when you have like one for every column of a color. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, because oh, some of the goals are like one of every color in a row. Right, right. And there's only five different colors. And I was like, that would be that would be a lot more cutthroat of 16. It is 90. Yeah, it's got to be 90, smart right? Chat. All right. I was I'm giving chat Dino Corgi gets a gold star. The correct yeah. answer is 90. Chris nice. gets half a gold star. Half a and gold. And Ro gets the other half. You share it. We oh, share okay. it. Okay. Honestly, half a gold honestly, star. I love that. I love I'm okay that with sharing. <laughs> yeah, 90. Well done, Dino Corgi. You can, yeah, have, no, you I can thought... have my whole half. <laughs> uh, if it's in your hands or mine, it's it's equal <laughs> equal value to me. Oh, uh, we, we like to share. Uh, no, I love that one because Sagrada is such an iconic game for like wild production value concepts that I'm like sure a bunch of publishers like passed on just by the nightmare that 90 dice sounds right. like like it yeah. honestly like from a working for publishers forever i like i can it's kind of a miracle that that game exists like i can imagine from a publisher standpoint no like right. I, we will not produce your game that needs 90 dice right. no we will not be doing right. that yeah, yeah. No, it's you a, know it's a real thing right yeah yeah, yeah. it's really cool uh, all right next one is okay no uh close yeah, your job, bgg John. tabs <laughs> yeah. if you have them up uh close bgg Next question is, what game currently holds the highest geek rating on BGG? So if you don't know what a geek rating is, it's the special board game geek calculated mm. score. So it's like, if this game that came out in the 80s, only two people have ever scored it and they scored it at a 10, it it's will 10. take into account the fact that only two people have scored oh, it. Right, so it's like an right. aggregated score. It's not just the straight mm. number, how, like, how many 10s did this get? It's about 
it weights it a little bit. I don't, I'm not in the weeds of the board game geek algorithm, mm. but that is my understanding of the geek number. We have some good guesses in now, chat is the geek, already. Is the geek rating different than, can I ask this question? Or you can, you can mm -hmm. say I can't ask this question, but is the geek rating different <laughs> than, than like the, the board game geek ranking? Cause like number one, we know what number one is, but that's, right. that doesn't have the highest geek ranking. That is, I think that's the same thing. Let me okay. double check. Yeah. Cause I, I because I know what number one, I know what number one, number one, two, three, four, yeah. five, six, seven. Let me, let me, like, let let's me, just let me, say let number one is, is Brass now Doom Imperium, right? right? Yeah, number yeah. one is Brass Burning, six is Doom Imperium, Doom, Doom yes, Imperium. Yes, they're, the, they're the same thing. The Mars. highest geek rating is also like the, the, the ranking number. It's the same. Oh, thing. okay. Right. Okay. Because I was okay. going to, I was going to go off the beaten path and guess like Oathsworn or something like that. Mm. Like, oh, we had an Oathsworn guess in chat. Yeah. I will say when I looked this up, this is not what I remembered it being last time I like consciously looked for this. I remember it being something different. So oh, that's you thought not it was Gloomhaven still? Gloomhaven? I'm not gonna. Or... I'm not gonna say anything. Brass What's Haven? your official answer? Well, then I'm gonna go Brass Birmingham because it's geek that's, rating yeah. in the ranking. That's number one. Did that just totally give it away? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I've, I've, I, I was very excited when Brass Birmingham overtook Gloomhaven, mm -hmm. yeah. and then mm -hmm. there was a whole slew of people who were like rating Brass ten, and then mm -hmm. rating Gloomhaven ten, yeah. and then Pandemic Legacy slipped in there, yeah, because yeah. everybody was tanking them down, mm -hmm. and so I think enough you people know you're tank, rating tank, them very, yeah, tank Gloomhaven. Yeah. That's literally that, what it is. Uh, Brass Birmingham yeah. currently has the number one spot. I remember last time I looked that up, it was it was Gloomhaven. I'm not up mm -hmm. on my BGG drama. I did oh, not okay. know about the fight that happened there. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I just was like, I was just shocked because for as long as I can remember, it was just Gloomhaven and I stopped sort of clocking it because I was like, it's just always going to be Gloomhaven. Yeah. And when I was scrolling through BGG trying to come up with questions, I was uh, surprised that it's now Brass. So Brass yeah. is yep. number one. Um, it was, it, it should have been a trick question. If it was still Gloomhaven and I like seeded some doubt that it wasn't, uh, but no, it is now Brass and then Pandemic Legacy season one. And then Gloomhaven is now in third. I'm just peeking at Ruel's ratings. That's all I'm peeking at. Oh yeah, my <laughs> ratings. <laughs> I've rated <laughs> Brass Burnham 9, um, yeah. Legacy it's Season 1, 8.5. I don't know why the Ruel rating isn't listed here in a column of its own. For right, everyone it should be. all the time. <laughs> wow, I'm gonna, ridiculous. I'll tell you right now, that Tarforum Mars that I ranked 10, that was a long time ago. I would not rank it a 10 now, I'll be honest. Oh, it's, yeah? It's mm -hmm. Change it. Change it right now. Okay, we're going to change it. We're on the fly, folks. Tarforum Mars what is goes it? from what, a 10 to? down to <gasps> a... In real time, we're watching if, review bombing happen in real this is time. Oh, I don't even know ranks. It's going all the way down to eight point seven five. Look at that. Oh, I thought it was going to go to eight point three. I was 8. Point, okay. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. I still have a lot of love for that 8. game, 8. but was good. yeah, I'm all about Ares Expedition now. That that's replace mm. it for me. I, I really same, love Ares same. Expedition. I yeah. yeah, no, I'm I'm all for Ares Expedition. It yeah. it just totally kills. It's just faster. It's yeah. just faster. Everything's faster. There's more simultaneous actions. Yep. I just, it takes what I love about that game and, game and just condenses it. Yeah, I know. I've been playing, I agree. I've been playing Terraforming Mars a little bit on Board Game Arena. And I've been having a really good time with it. Though. It's on Board Game Arena? It's it is. Game Arena it is great. Is that new? Yeah. 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 <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, oh, it's that's, pretty new. Yeah. That's very exciting. Yeah. That's you very, don't have, very You exciting. don't have any of these expansions, so you can't have Prelude in there, but you can do with the that's corporate okay. era. Mm -hmm. Everything starts at zero. Base or Ares is pretty good. One. I like yeah. Prelude a lot, but like base areas yeah. is they already come with like different starting. Oh, oh no, sorry, and it's stuff. not Ares Expedition on on Board Game Arena. It's um base uh, base Mars. Turf Wars. I'm out of here. Yeah. I'm out of here. I've been misled. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That? I let you astray. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Nicely All right. Great. Next question. Next right. question. Next okay. question. Uh, this is kind of a I don't know. I don't know that I would have gotten this right. This is probably a gimme for some people and for other people not. Um, what year was Catan originally released? Oh. I, I feel like I, I could have gotten this. around it, but the what was the year of the original release date of Catan? I think I have it. Yeah, I think so too. All right, chat. Let's see. Get your got... guesses in now, chat. Cheek fan says 2005. Blue oh, Sapphire 95. Josh said a few 95. people are saying the same. Yeah. Bing says 96. All dancing around the same basic yeah. time frame. I'm. Oh yeah. Now I'm starting to second guess myself. I I was yes. off the top of my I'm head. I was thinking guess. 95. He swayed by the hive mind. Yeah, Ruel. now I'm thinking it might be a little <laughs> earlier. 90. Yeah, I'm, I think I got it wrong. I'm gonna go with 95. 95. Yeah. Chris, I was, what's your guess? I was gonna go with 99, but I'm wrong. Yeah, but I have correct. to. I have to stay. I have to stay true to my guess. 99. The correct answer is 1995. So yeah, gold started John Tripp, Blue Ooh. Sapphire. 
who else gets a gold star? Barefoot. Congrats yeah. on your blue star. There it is. Or your, not blue star. Your gold star. I was reading blue sapphire. Yeah. Not when I was when I I was thinking I was like I was like. It, it, 99 jumped out to me and then I was like maybe 90 and then I couldn't decide and apparently it was in the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone everyone was right around it. Yeah. yeah. Mid, like mid 90s. Close. All right, this is a this is a give me your best guess um and it's prices right rules. Closest okay. without going over wins. One what is what is the $1. highest possible Mhm. Mm the do you have something you want like to say to the class, guys? <laughs> we said it. <laughs> All right. Next question is: What is the highest possible score in a standard game of Yahtzee? Oh, oh, oh I love this math question. time. Welcome to Math Corner, with Ray. I put this in time. here because I know how much Yahtzee you've played, Ruel. Yeah. So hopefully you can give it an educated oh. guess. If someone actually knows this, I won't believe that you. is so good. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'll tell you right okay, now. There's, recently, there's what, there's 15 rolls that you can do. Or uh, man, I don't know the exact numbers. So the top part, you can get a bonus and it'll get you to 63. Yeah, because you get all sixes, all fives, all fours, all threes, all twos, right? Because you roll the... You roll the... At the top part, if you get the a minimum of three of each one, then you get a bonus yeah. of 35 points. But then you can still score Yahtzees on all of those. And the first Yahtzee is 50. Each oh, remaining Yahtzee, Yahtzee is on, on, yes. on those. Eh? You will you'll get okay. those points and then an separate. additional 100 point bonus. Right. Oh man, it's so I, I, can tell you, I played this on BGA so recently. You could play it solo. I scored five hundred something. We'll so it's definitely now. over five hundred. Okay. Um so and what's the bonus for Yahtzee? A hundred? Is the, the bonus first for one's fifty and then every one after that's a hundred. It's a hundred. Okay. And you All can right, use a Yahtzee on the straights. Like the straights and the chance, you could also use Yahtzees there. To fill in those spaces like a large straight. Gotcha. Oh man. But you would would you All right, get the I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys a hint. Bing's guess of five is wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. Okay, okay I've got thanks. Mine. I've got That's mine. wrong. I've got mine locked in. I've got mine locked in. <laughs> a process of elimination. It? I think it's that been is not time. correct. Yeah. But let's okay, what do we think, asked. folks? I'm 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 gonna say I've got mine I've got mine locked chat's in. Chat's got chat's got their guesses in, so whenever you're ready, hit me. Okay. I'm gonna go with twelve hundred. Uh, and okay. I'm going to go with 1563. Woo! All right. The answer is 1575. Oh 1575 points is the mathematically highest possible score in standard yes. Yahtzee. Chris, the gold star is all Chris. yours. You were very close. John oh, Tripp guessed 1500, but wow. because you added these extra couple, mm, 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 extra give couple me that gold ones, star, gold baby. star for you. Big time gold <laughs> star. Well done, Chris. Wow. Don't ask me to explain the math, but well, I, it's, it's that really is... because I know that there are like 15 rolls, and if yeah. you can get about 100 for each mm -hmm. one, then I was like, okay, 15, and then, and then 63 for the chunk of... Uh, of the numbers, yeah, right, like uh, the, the six top five, right. three. So okay. that's that's how I. That's well how I done. All right. that, next, next question. This is a this is a um, which one of these does not belong? Question. Which of the following has not won a Spiel des Jahres, the official big game of the year? Not the Kenner Spiel, not the the big Spiel des Jahres, which has not won. Your four options are Rummy Cube, Camel Up. Love Letter or King Domino? One more time. Those are Rummy Cube, Camel Up, Love Letter, or King Domino, which has not won the Spiel des Jahres. And please don't come for me for my pronunciation on that. I'm, I'm, wow. I'm in the trenches. I'm doing my best. <laughs> no, that, that's great. Oh. Hmm. I, I know two. So I'm between two. I know exactly uh, one for sure. That's it. And And I'm trying to see if this is like... I, I want to go with the with the non obvious one. I'm like I, I'm like oh that one has to have won yeah. and that one mm -hmm. can't have won. And so I I'm reversing mm -hmm. my I'm re reversing my opinion. There's a that. little bit of a hive mind happening in chat. I don't know that you want to follow it, but there's a little bit of a hive yeah. mind happening. Yeah, I haven't. I I mean I just glanced at chat and uh, they are they are thinking what I was oh. going to say as well. We're diversifying because... a little bit though. We're getting a couple of King Domino guesses now. Yeah. Well, I'm. I feel now confident to lock in my guess just because chats had an had an opportunity. So like the delay's fine. Yep. Um. I'm I'm going also with Love Letter because mm -hmm. I think Love Letter should have, and I think Camel Up maybe shouldn't have. But I'm that's that's my swap that yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. That's but exactly. I feel like Camel Up did it. Yeah. That's exactly my thinking too, Chris. I was thinking 
love letter seems like such an automatic but i like no i don't think it did that year i feel like I there was think a, it did yeah whatever year it came out i think there was something that sort of eclipsed it i don't remember what it was but i do remember i know for eclipse. sure king domino Her yeah kids. it's eclipse yeah <laughs> so yeah well we're we're on the All same right. wavelength here chris okay lock yeah. it in love letter well congratulations yeah. to everyone who did not who did not get swayed the answer is love letter that was wow. my little tricksy one wow uh, because i feel like especially like Rummy Cube was one of the first, I think Rummy Cube was the first winner of the Spiels Jars. Camelope okay. still blows my mind. Camelope is <laughs> yeah. like fine, but it still blows my mind that that's a Spiel winner. And yeah, Love yeah. Letter is one of those games that I feel like revolutionized, especially like small box wallet games in the industry as like a viable Yo, mass yeah. market hit, but it did not yep. win a Spiel, even though it like has, it has a lot of the criteria that I feel like it's low budget. It's easy to learn. It hits all those things that typically... Yeah are a dead ringer for a spiel, but it didn't win one. So congrats, yeah. guys. You, wow. you get another gold star to share. Good job. You didn't get tricked. <laughs> so 2012, what was this? I, I'm wondering. So Love Letter did yeah. not win in 2012. I don't know that it was actually nominated at all. I, I just, when I was nominated. looking through no. the winners I of the spiel. I think it's just like a real like content creator boom. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That I don't remember seeing that on the nominations list. I can go yeah. back and check, but I'm gonna. I, I need. I, it's like really bugging me now. So 2012. Yeah, you can look up. You can look up the. The winner yeah, yeah. was Kingdom Builder by Donald Vaccarino, mm. the designer mm. of Dominion. His other game, Kingdom Builder, which is fine. I knew that one. I knew that one won as well. I haven't played it, but yeah, it, it's because I know. Yeah, yeah. People have been referencing it, being like, "This one, the Spiel of Yarn." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it's okay. Um, oh, one of the nominees, or no, the yeah, nominees was Las Vegas from that year, the, the dice rolling game, which I love. Oh. I think it's a great game. But cool. interesting that Love Letter didn't win, though. It's so, yeah, I, I tell you, it's the, probably the, the biggest seller out of all those games, uh, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it won the <laughs> popular demand. Yeah, exactly. Prize. It's the people's it choice. The... Yeah. yeah, it won the give us a bunch of IP offshoots and to make <laughs> right. some money. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But I just thought that was I thought that was fascinating. It was just a game yeah. that I feel like hits all those boxes. Oh yeah, totally. Um, all right, are you ready for the next one? Yes. Oh, yeah. More trivia? Okay. Uh, I'll do I'll do a few more. Um, next one is close your BGG. All that all that jazz. What game has received the highest score on BGG from Rado? What is Rado's highest rated game on BGG? Oh, oh like if you go to his profile. If you and go you to his, his profile, games, oh. what is the highest and, rated game? And he game? only has one game that's rated a 10? There is only, yes. No, it's not a 10. I think it's a 9.9. 9. Oh, Rado, you. That's, that's <laughs> I, can, I can double check. That's the it's not worst. A 10, no. yeah. Oh, that's the worst thing I've ever heard of. Oh my god. I wonder if this is a trick one because I feel it's like it's probably got to be a trick, yeah. Yeah, cuz it, it, to <laughs> me it's it's got to be too pandemic, right? Cuz he loves that game, but <laughs> is it actually like Pandemic Legacy 1 or maybe uh, see, I've got a different I can confirm it was guess. a 9.9. 9. Rado doesn't give 10s. There are wow. no 10s. 9.9 wow. 9 is the highest he's given. Maybe it was also... Rado who I who I saw that one review of. <laughs> uh, this game is perfect in every way. 9. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so is it? I'm pandemic? saying I'm saying Castles of Burgundy. I'm locking that in. Burgundy, okay. yeah. He, he, I'm going pandemic. I'll, I'll go with OG pandemic. All right, locking it in. Mm -hmm. All right, the... plot twist. It's Rummy Cube. <laughs> Rummy Cube. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right, the answer is. Uh, Ruel, congratulations yeah. on your solo gold star. Wow. Yes. Uh, Pandemic, the, the the original first edition of Pandemic is rated a 9.9 .9 by Rado, followed by Shadowrun Crossfire, which got a 9.9, oh, .9, and right. then Castles of Burgundy, which got a 9.75. Oh, so you were Rado, very, you. very, very Point close. You, away. you were very close. We, we nice. were so, you know, we bonded so much over Seven Wonders <laughs> two-player, and I thought we were turned a corner, but I'm honestly, so sorry. I've yes. never felt more loathing for a person in my whole life in this moment right now oh that's great all right i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna spin it back on someone else now next all question right. what game does ruel have the most games logged of on bgg what game oh has God. ruel logged the most of on all bgg right. now contextualize your logging ruel um for us i'm very audience, i'm very poor at, at logging chris so yeah. Uh, and now, do you log with BG Stats? And I do does log that with BG Stats. Import? 
Uh, I do BG stats. I do import it in, but I'm going to tell you at the start of my journey in a board game, I was really bad at logging. So I did not log maybe the first six months of the hobby. And then what's funny during the pandemic, you think, Hey, I'm at home. I got nothing else to do, but log Mm -hmm. games. I didn't log. I barely logged stuff during the pandemic. And I feel like I'm still in that post pandemic funk of not logging everything I play. So the things that I've been logged are probably not representative of what I've actually played, but We're going with no, what I've it got, says. I've got on a BG. good guess. Yeah, I've got a good guess. If yeah. if if like, I just wanted to know how much like BGG was like mm-hmm. importing, you know what I mean? Like how yeah, accurate yeah. that that yeah. was, or if it was like up until a certain point and then you dropped mm-hmm. off. Like yeah. I I do BG stats, but I don't import those over yeah. to BGG because yep. I mm-hmm. don't care. Yeah. Um. This is so I've got my guess. Okay, I'm really guess. curious. I have no idea what I've logged. So this is gonna be this is news to me. <laughs> I, I'll take my guess. So I think it's gonna be like. It's got to be something you could solo because this, uh, you know, I play a ton of games solo. Oh dang! I've already lost. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's. I mean, it could be Sagrada. I don't know. Is it? I don't know. We'll see. Um, I my guess is Lost Cities. Um, oh, Lost Cities. Oh. That's my guess. But I also don't. And, and I assume you don't um, log like BGA play. I was just if I log BGA, yeah. that'd probably be close to my number one. But I do yeah, not log but BGA. I'm, I, I'm a, I was still yeah. assuming that you didn't didn't log BGA, so yeah. I wasn't like skewed by that. Okay. Uh, I just I just know that you and Michelle both like it. Yeah. And yeah. and so I, I I assume that she is your your number one game my go to gaming partner for your sure. Your go to gaming partner, and yep. because it's so quick. Right, you want to have a smaller, smaller time game because yep. it is so quick. Yeah, like that's how you can get so many. Like I, I had so I have so many plays logged of friggin' Skull, right? Because <laughs> right, not yeah. Because I my yeah. favorite game of all time, but because <laughs> I played a lot of it in the summer, you know. And so I was looking back on my year, and I was like, oh, I played the most games of Skull. But like in terms of actual time spent, I don't think it is. But if okay. we're talking like plays, so when you're skewed metric, when you're logging those games of Skull, are you logging every single game you play? Like when you go out, like meet friends at like a bar or yeah, whatever, like. Okay. Generally, I'll, I'll I'll try to do that, or I'll just like kind of you know estimate it. But I like yeah. I like giving people their win percentage for stuff like Skull and Coup. But then, oh, okay. but then for something like One Night Werewolf, where I'm using the app on the phone, yeah. I'm, not, mm. I'm yeah. not gonna log every play. Like, I'm the same way. If it's a it digital up. game, I don't log it, even if yeah. it is like yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. log one session, be like, oh, I played it that night. But yeah, like, okay. And that's yeah. so yeah. Just going back to like when I started my board game journey, I did log digital stuff. So like Star Realms was like my number one for the mm. first couple of months. Then I realized mm. I don't. I just I just kept stopped logging the digital. But anyways, yeah. I'm curious, Ray. What the heck have I, I logged? What was uh, what was your guess, Chris? My guess was Lost Cities officially. Lost and Ruel. Uh, my guess was Sagrada. Uh, the answer is Azul. You Azul have 60 plays of Azul oh. logged. On wow! BGG. Nice. I played a ton of Zool when facts. it came out. Yeah, Michelle and I loved that game. That was yeah. our oh, that was our jam back in the day. Oh, that's so cool! This thanks Plays for looking quick, that up right, right now. Okay, that's yeah, cool. yeah, it was fun. I tried. I I <laughs> I couldn't find Chris's BGG user, so I oh. there are unfortunately none <laughs> for you. But I did scour okay. through your YouTube channel trying to come up with something. Oh my yeah, it's because it's, it's not room and, and board. It's just Chris C F George. I think. Yeah, mm. I like couldn't find it because I was searching like room and board with like underscores and stuff and couldn't find it. And there was gonna be a question because I was searching through your YouTube channel trying to come up with something funny. Uh, and I was gonna do um, something about like what percentage of your videos are you wearing a backwards hat in your thumbnail? And then I got tired <laughs> and went to bed. And I stopped. <laughs> but I did you know, start you, that. You know, you know and what then percentage? I was like, damn, this Pandemic dude makes a lot of videos. Where I did not have a haircut. So that's yeah. the percentage. <laughs> nice. <laughs> where my hair was like down to here and it yeah. needed to be out of my face. <laughs> Or right, when what, I have a yeah, when I have not had a haircut. That's now great. that I know your username, you are fair game for next trivia. I'm gonna go deep dive have, into your stuff. I don't have I don't do too much on, on BGG though. Like what about BGA. Can I can I scour your BGA? Oh you could you, you could oh, scour yeah. my BGA. Oh um, yeah. You could, you could ask I got I've got a trivia question. Oh, this is this is maybe embarrassing, but I can do a trivia question on oh. my BGA right now. Yeah, yeah. That is that is number based. Um how many games of seasons do I have logged on BGA? Have I played on BGA? Now oh, I played this game for like you know yeah eight eight years let's say. Oh my gosh! And I know how much you love this game. It's got okay easily over a hundred. I've never played seasons. How long does that take to play? What's the play time uh, on that? on board table? game arena? About seventeen minutes. On board? Oh, oh no! Yeah. I'm gonna say That's something gonna like. Be a- dangerously high number yeah definitely over 100 i'm gonna say oh well, let me see over 100 i'm gonna say 150 150 i'm gonna say 
398. Oh my god! I think there's yeah. no way. I feel like we're What's going the math lower. on that. He spent like a straight day doing nothing but playing. I, I feel like this is, this is okay. I'm sorry. This is over the course of eight years. Yeah, and you're thinking one 150. Like yeah. this is that is absurdly low compared to what the number is. Oh, absurdly I'm, low. I'm telling you. So it's got to be over a thousand. No. Oh. So eight years, there's 365 days in a year times eight. That's, yeah. If he plays it once a day. But you would imagine his interest in this game has waxed and waned over eight years, right? Yeah. Like, you would imagine that he goes on binges, yeah. right? Yeah, like, I, I figure, like, one <laughs> day maybe stop. he plays it, like, six times, and then the next week right, he doesn't play right. it once. Oh. I'm going to go, you know, instead of 398, if that's, I'm like... I'm also currently ranked 90th. On oh, wait, oh you're actually gosh. ranked that's, in that game? Oh, well, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome, and that's yeah, definitely yeah. over and a thousand. And that's pretty. And that's pretty <laughs> low <laughs> compared to where I where I usually am. I'm only at five oh nine ELO. Yes, uh, awesome. Yeah, I, I probably lost a few games like the last couple of times I played it. Wow. Um, okay, right, I'll, case, I'll re I'll recalibrate. Yeah. Same. If one twenty is embarrassingly low. Yeah. It's 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 digital. You can play like four hundred. So Okay, I'm going to go with this year as my number 2,024 times, Chris. There's no way. It's gotta um, be. Everybody's still below. Everyone's like saying 151, 143. We've played more than 2,000 games of seasons. Oh my gosh. What, 2,500? Uh, AG5 uh, says, yeah, like Chris is normal. Um, I've won... Twenty four fifty six. What you've? Oh my! <laughs> wow! So if you um, won that, if you're like fifty percent, that's at least four thousand. Oh my god! Are you? I've you're played, better than a fifty percent win rate. I'm sure. I'm better than fifty percent. Um, oh my goodness! Although, although with seasons, it it kind of feels fifty percent ish. Uh, I've played um, six thousand games. No, 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 oh, less than that. Less than four thousand. Four thousand. Four thousand and eighty six. Wow! Oh my. god. God, four thousand! You should get like a prize. Seriously, should, like, you know, like on YouTube when you get the game. subscriber plaque, you should get a BGA like <laughs> log finish games plaque. Like if you play a game on BGA more than a thousand times, you should get like a like a thing in the mail from I BGA. Agree. Or at least like, a, congratulations! Did you get like a special on, badge. You know how they give you badges? Yeah. They say like they that's do, on BGA. Insane. They do say yeah. They have a one k victory. They oh, say. Oh my god! It says I'm a world class specialist. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, that is insane something. though wow. it's it's just it's a it's a relaxing easy a game you just like when you know it specials. you just draft the card so quickly yeah uh you, you're you're really pushing your luck in terms of rolling the dice and like trying to draw more cards I, seeing how many cards you can get just, you just always that, take that cards oh my away. god i can't um, get over how vague the world-class specialist sounds like that feels like one of those buzzwords people will put in their linkedin profile like <laughs> that doesn't mean anything you're just like i'm a world-class specialist and you're like yeah, yeah, at yeah, what yeah. like what can you do <laughs> wow that's so there's, wild. there's my there's that my there's my chris trivia question that you would get from that's the best trivia question that's what i would get, get. That, is, that is great yeah. 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 that Damn. is fantastic thank you for sharing chris wow, Jennifer, I... thank you for that quick math they say you've spent 1157 hours playing seasons wow. that's just reasonable. online that's Which, solid when, when you think about it like that's less than 20 days that's like playing Baldur's gate 10 times that's <laughs> less than 10 <laughs> days it's about it's about 10 straight days of seasons which that's like awesome. Makes sense, you know. So twenty yeah, days tracks. with sleep. If you, yeah. you know, you wake up, you play for you know a couple hours, <laughs> seven, you know, ten, twelve. You know, what I, can you do? It's cool that you could knock out that game though in seventeen minutes. So oh yeah, it plays that, really quickly. That and it's helps. Like, yeah, and it's one of those games too. It's it's got a tough. It's a tough learning curve of like if if I would ever play it with a beginner, yeah, like there's no mm -hmm. chance. Right. Um, but like it was really fun to play with somebody who knew the game in real life because you can. We actually banged it out very quickly in real life as well because we were okay. just like draft 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 draft, draft yeah. roll the dice boom so it was it was surprising i think i think we played like 32 minutes of us playing like quickly wow. in real life wow yeah. uh, and i and i think like you would probably play it would probably take an hour for if you're just like learning it you're looking at all the cards sure. and mm -hmm. whatever and you should only play this game at two players as well that's mm. all two players oh yeah yeah um not a single i would say not a single three player was in there it's all two players wow yeah, because wow. that's wow. how you can play it quickly, and also it's just like better balanced. Yeah, I think. Oh my gosh! That, that's and, as a world, and as a world class specialist, <laughs> I think we'll, we'll, take, we'll take my word on it. It's a world class specialist. <laughs> oh my god! That's, that's awesome. You heard it here first, folks. We all learn something new. Jeez. 
That is amazing. Oh yeah, um, Corthane says Corthane says so. Eleven fifty eight is forty eight days. Oh yeah, my math was definitely skewed incorrectly. Oh, wow, forty eight. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So but, almost you know, two over, months. Over eight years. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. Probably more. Probably more. Oh my gosh. That's. I really amazing. do feel like I learned something about you today, Chris. <laughs> yeah. The world specialist. This brought folks. us closer. <laughs> well, this is why. Like, I often talk about Everdell, and I'm like, oh, it kind of reminds me of Seasons, and like that. That. Is like, I mean, it should be pretty high praise for Everdell. Yeah, um, yeah. Because it's like, it, it gives me that feeling of like, I could play this a yeah. lot, let's yeah. say. Yeah. Over and over, let's say. Amazing. Well, um, um, yeah, this has been very illuminating. Thank you, friends, for uh, hanging with us. Do you have one more? Uh, we, we are. Can I do close. a bonus one? Let's do it. Just super fast. Yeah. Let's do a bonus. It's, it's, it's a silly one. Okay. Uh, bonus round. Uh, what is the subject of the oldest video currently available on Rado's YouTube channel? Uh-huh. That's it. That's that's the, the bonus oldest. round. The oldest currently available video on Rado's YouTube so channel what is the subject it's, matter. It's I bet you it's something not board game related because I'm I'm sure he might have posted something before he did the rock. I'm gonna say it's gotta be something with dogs. Maybe he posted a picture of his okay. or a video right. of his it's dogs. It's gonna be how yeah. to play pandemic. There, there right. you go. Uh, okay. Chris, you get the pl- uh, not Chris. Sorry, I, oh, my mistake. Ruel, how dare you? <laughs> Ruel, how dare I, you? that was an unintentional. <laughs> I got so excited there. I was like, how did I? How did I get that right? I like. I really haven't been that genuinely excited in a very long time, and you just you really ripped that from my grasp. <laughs> um. Well, I'm. <laughs> I wish I could say that was intentional and I did that to, to slight you, but I really did it. Um, Ruel, congratulations on your platinum star. Wow. The Thank subject you. matter of Ruel's, the oldest video currently available on Rada's YouTube channel is Beagles in the Snow. It's just him no filming way. his beagles running around in the snow. <laughs> oh my and that God. just that Incredible. just made my day. That is Incredible. great. And you're right. It was something to do with dogs. That was oh, to do very dogs. well done. Wow. Uh, Ruel yeah. officially wins trivia. You're Thank you're you. the you're the world yeah. class specialist. You're the world class specialist. <laughs> world class specialist in trivia. trivia. Congratulations, Ruel. <laughs> Thank you. Throughout my lifetime, I've played it yeah. uh, trivia at 48.25 days. Uh, thank you, Chris, for the uh, party uh, <laughs> favors. Oh, That's great. You know, uh, just real quick, great. Do, do you know what the board game, what his first board game was? Oh, it was something I had never heard of before, which okay. is why I didn't put it in here. I was going to say, what was the first game he covered? Maybe it's well known. And yeah, I, just, I, I, I have a feeling it was like young to recognize it, but yeah. I it, it, what it really was. definitely wasn't pandemic. It, it really definitely pandemic. wasn't yeah. pandemic. Yeah. I would have, I would have done that because that would have been like, what's the first board game that would have been a trick question after his highly, most yep. highly rated one. But no, there's two separate videos of just, it's, it's <laughs> Beagles in the Snow and then it's more Beagles in the Snow. Are his the two sequel. Oh videos. my gosh. Okay, that's and it. I'm, just... yeah. We all know what we're going to be watching after the show, folks. We're going to watch that's Beagles it. That was stuff. my bonus round. Thank, Thank you, Ray. That's, that's brilliant. <laughs> that's so brilliant. Uh, friends, why don't we do a, a quick battle royale? You got, you're all going to duke it out while we get ready for the show here. We're going to be doing our top 12 games uh, that we should hate but actually love. So stick around for that. Mm-hmm. And uh, why don't I update the title here? And I'm going to, as always, because I have the bladder of a beagle, uh, oh, during yeah. Battle Royale. I'm going to yeah. go BRB. I'll be right back. Yeah, BRB, we, bio time. We all know that Ray is secretly all the avatars in the Battle Royale. It's like a Miley <laughs> Cyrus sort of thing. Spoiler alert for Miley Cyrus. Nice. For those of you who haven't watched, uh, Han- she is Hannah Montana. Okay. Wait, what? <laughs> yes. She just puts on a blonde wig. And nobody notices. Well, it's nice. the same thing. Ray is down there <laughs> fighting to the death with Duking herself, it <laughs> just for your amusement. So I, I, I want we gotta we gotta show Ray some love yeah. for all of her her avataring. Yes. Um, and speaking of avatars, we got Andrew Scott, Feld fan, uh, Ag Fox, and uh, Billy Pratt duking it out. Uh, Felt mm. fans won this before, I think. Um, my money's on my money's on Billy Pratt. I think okay. Billy Pratt was a was a champion. Oh, close. Yep, and Billy Pratt just and... took someone out. Oh, took out okay. Felt fan. All right, nice. Took you know, Andrew fan. and Ag Fox, and we're down to two, folks. My other, my other, I also would have said Ag Fox. Oh, okay. That's my other guess. So, well, well you know, now it's pretty great choice. Pretty pretty easy to say that when okay. when you see what happens, yeah. and then you can just take credit for it. <laughs> Oh, we got A.G. Fox um, and Billy Pratt uh, duking it out. All right. Who's going to take it? Oh. Billy Pratt. Congrats, Billy Pratt. You have won a Billy Pratt, baby. Gold. So I got it right. I got yes, it right. You got it right, Chris. <laughs> I, was, I was manipulating behind that. Honestly, Ray told me. She said, <laughs> as, she, as she slipped the mask over her face, she was like, 
keep an eye out for Billy Pratt today. She was smoking a cigar. To, she the cigar. put the cigar under the mask. And I was like, Ray, aren't you going to get a lot of like smoke damage there? And she's like, don't worry about it, kid. A job's a job. You got to do what you got to do. Make sure you go to theop.com. We've got a lot of great, great things coming out at the op. I was like, oh, tell me more about that. Have you heard of 10 Days in North America? Alan Moon, better than Ticket to Ride. I was like, Ray, you've got so much smoke in your mask right now. She's like, keep an eye out for Billy Pratt. At this time, the smoke was like pouring, pouring out of the, the eyes of her mask. She just completely disfigured. Oh my gosh. Uh, like, we're not just we're not just Monopoly anymore, kids. We're not. We got it covered. <laughs> this is gold, folks. Someone please clip all this. Uh, this is gold. <laughs> Comedy gold, folks. I, I love well, the voice. Well, thank you, Anne. I've been I've been um, working on my Ray impression for a long time, and I think I finally was ready to unveil it to the world. <laughs> and I just wanted you to see what I saw because, it, man, it was horrifying. I've never seen such a transformation before. Yeah. It was just magical, really. It, it was beautiful. It was a thing to behold, folks. And I'm so yeah. glad we were able to uh, enjoy this. And uh, Ray is back now. And it's, she's unfortunately missed it, but it'll live on in the. That's uh, not Pablo's voice, John. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Pablo's voice. If I were to guess of what Pablo Ray Ray sounds like, this. Ah, uh, come on! What, look at all of our great from the app. Keep your eyes on Billy Pratt. That's more like this. And Pablo, Pablo would be like, hey, how's it going, Excuse wise me? guy? Uh, I'm going to whack you. That's completely oh. different. Totally, totally oh, different. my God. Nice. Oh, um, I was just, uh, Ray, you're, you're back after the Battle Royale finished. What a coincidence. Conveniently. Wow. Mm-hmm. Like, um, mm-hmm. what was the other one? Po- was it Pokeroo who didn't appear? Pokeroo? Pokeroo. That sounds like some Canadian it is, it is thing some I've never Canadian, heard of. Yeah, Canadian, <laughs> Pokeroo, yeah. Canadian, Canadian TV show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, why All right, we, I'm good now. Okay, we are good. I'm going to switch over yeah. to this scene here. And let me make sure we got our browser working. Mm-hmm. Browser is working. We have an intro from Richard. Um, folks, stick around. If anyone raids, just let them know that we're recording for YouTube and we will be back for the uh, post show uh, and hanging out, taking some fun, uh, sharing some other games that didn't make the list, and we'll chit chat a little bit back then. We are starting late. Uh, we've run a little overtime, we but uh, we'll, we'll, we're we'll having get too much this. fun. We're having way too much fun, which is which is the goal in life, isn't it, folks? Um, Ray, Chris, are we good to go? Mm-hmm. Feeling great. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. All right, folks, here yeah, we go. Good to go real well. All right, thank you, Pablo. Oh, okay, I mean, thank you. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Uh, let's go, Richard, on the intro. Hey, everybody, this week's r is brought to you by the Ultimate Game Night Bag. And, folks, there are only a few more hours left to back this on Kickstarter if you were ever interested. Uh, the bag has done really, really well. It's uh, raised over 100000 which is very exciting because it means it's hit both of its big stretch goals. Um, the original uh, options for it were black, blue, and heather. Personally, I, I really like the heather, even though what I demonstrated in last week's r was the black bag. But, uh, folks, they have unlocked charcoal gray and purple. And Jen, I know she would love to get her hands on that purple bag. Now, the bag itself is absolutely phenomenal. Um, there'll be a link for it down in the show notes if you would like to check out the Kickstarter page or the video I did for it uh, where I put it through its paces, showed how tough it is, how many pockets it has. It's very smart design and uh, it's incredible sturdy design as well. Heck, if you scroll down here, I mean, I, I really, I mean, they did a better job showing off how to use these pockets than I did, I have to admit. So many great features for it. Um, And again, tough as nails. They put this thing through its bases with a forklift and it survived. It's a great, great bag for folks who are looking for their ultimate game night bag. And like I said, folks, you've got a few hours left to back. Links down in the show notes. And now, uh, let's see what the gang is up to. And hello, friends. Welcome to the R&R Show, episode 88 my name's Ruel, hanging out as always with a Chris and Ray. Chris and Ray, hello, friends. How are you? Doing woo. good. Woo! I, I, give it, I give it a resounding woo out woo, of woo. woo. Woo! That's what today is. All right. Uh, I, you, know, you know what I do give, give today? I give it this expression. 
which was my expression when I saw the purple. Because I was like, ooh, purple. Ooh, ooh lovely purple. color. Yeah. Like, I want that one. I, I, I do like those uh, new Jen. colors. Yeah. Hashtag I'm with Jen. Yeah, they look yeah. really nice. Uh, it's it's really, really, really nice. nice. So thank you to Mayday again for sponsoring this episode. Uh, folks, we've got a really fun episode uh, this time. This is something we talked a little bit about uh, during the pre-show. If you want to check out that, there'll be links uh, below where you can see the extended edition where we do a pre-show and a post-show. Uh, but during the pre-show, we talked about or shared about how this isn't a list that we've all, not all of us have done this before. Me personally, I've never done something like this where we talk about games that we should hate but actually love. So, um, Ray, Chris, how did you go about uh, searching for games for this list? Ray? Um, sure. So I went about this with primarily like genres and types of games that I typically don't gravitate towards. So like games that break the rules, I think is how Richard described it um, mm -hmm. in like his little pre, uh, in his little trailer for the show. Uh, that's how I went about this. I will say that I, um, I saw a sneak peek of everyone else's picks for this. And I feel like, I, with the track record that I've set on the show, people are going to expect me to bring out like weird, wacky, obscure games. But the problem is I like those. So mine mm. are going to actually be mm. extremely norm core <laughs> picks that go against my typical preferences for games. So I, did, I, I hate to disappoint. There are no like deep cut, abstract, weird games. I thought about that initially. I thought about like games that, you know, have terrible BGG ratings that I love, but that's a different... That's a different list because I like the weird little, like the weird little yep. terrible, like quote unquote terrible games that don't sound like their games. Um, so yeah, a lot of mine are just norm core picks that everyone else loves and that I also love, but I own not a whole else like it. So uh, I did the list that Ray said she wasn't going to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why when I saw your list, I was like, oh man. Yeah. But then I, it wouldn't have been disingenuous because that's a, that's a type of game that I really I think like. You're, I think you're right. I think I am a complete dirty liar, uh, because I, I, I like these games and I probably like would always like these games. I think you're right. I think nice. I should like these I games. To, I, think, I didn't mean to I, discredit I think, your list. No, I think I should like these games, and I think everybody should like these games because objectively they are the best games. I'm so oh, excited. There it is. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait. Um, yeah. yeah, I went more in guilty pleasures, right? Into that, mm -hmm. that sort of like guilty pleasure vibe, which we were originally pitching as a title. And yeah. I think the change mm -hmm. of title does actually change the calculation. And I decided yeah. to ignore that and continue with the original. <laughs> yeah. Love that. <laughs> nice. Love that. Yeah, I was uh, pretty much the same way I, I, as Ray. Just things that I didn't think I would like. They're like just totally different from what I normally play. And that's what I went with. Uh, but mm -hmm. why don't we kick things off with number 12? And Chris, I, I can't wait to talk about this one. Go right ahead, oh, yeah. my friend. Well, you can you, you can play that you can play the video right away because what the video is it's an hour long video maybe a little bit longer because uh, I sent in that that link uh, and all this video is is that it'll set the scene for what this game is and that of course is atmosphere oh. atmosphere atmosphere this this might be Look. nightmare oh is it stop big, motion is the whole, is it an hour long stop motion video <laughs> no I thought it was a different video I thought it was a different video I was um yeah this is the video I, I, I really got wish, imagine I really I really wish nightmare? that it was that ah, was different um yeah so nightmare. so nightmare or atmosphere um or atmosphere the harbingers uh there's there is um if you if you Google VHS atmosphere full VHS you can get a sense of like the gatekeeper uh, and, mm. and and go through or you or, or search it on YouTube. It's it's this game. It's a VHS board game, and I mean, I I do I am not adhering to this list because there is there is no world in which I wouldn't like a VHS board game experience. Except there is because like I'm I'm very mechanics driven and like objectively it's not a good game. Like it <laughs> it, it isn't. Uh, it's like a very bad game because it's roll and move, uh, <laughs> and then you are stopped periodically by this gatekeeper who we were seeing on the screen. Oh, who goes, right stop, <laughs> whose turn is it next? Hands up. And you say you have to put your hands up. And if you don't put your hands up, sometimes it'll be like, if you didn't put your hands up, lose your turn. And you're like, oh, dang it. <laughs> um, and so it'll be like, now who is that? Whose turn is it? Have you been good? <laughs> Have you? Answer me, <laughs> mortal. And it's like, it's, I would just watch this as a video. I wouldn't even need to play the game. And it's mostly it's silence because there's just like spooky music in between. And then he'll pop up unexpectedly. But like when he, when that gatekeeper pops up, oh, baby. Uh, oh, it's so baby. good. Uh, I had this game as a kid and I played it like, uh, I always played it on like my birthday. And it was just such a like, funny experience 
I still own it, and I like I don't. I'm not going to get rid of it. Um, I, I should go. Yeah, it. I should go grab the grab the box. <gasps> I think I still own it. At least I hope oh I certainly do. God. I I definitely still <laughs> own the um the also the Klingon board game there's star trek the vcr interactive board game at klingon's challenge oh that's gosh. the bgg <laughs> listing uh if you <laughs> it's it's fantastic uh galron is um from star trek well he's not galron he's a different name but it's played by the same actor who plays galron who's always saying <laughs> for glory um you you're he's like kidnapped the star trek sh fleet ship and there's like a whole 10 minute introduction where he's like, oh, you little baby ensigns, I've kidnapped the ship. I'm going to fly into Klingon war space and like get blast them up and start a war between the Klingons and the Federation. And you've only got an hour to like break out of the cell and the brig and like stop them and get access to the bridge and stop them. Um, so well, they're just like, they're pure experiences, right? Mm. Yeah. I think that face says it all. I, that's, the gatekeeper is my this. my yeah. sleep paralysis the, demon. The he just pops oh. up suddenly. He's like, <laughs> he my pops version up, of the and Hat and Man. also in, in atmosphere. So nightmare came first. Well, it was called it was called atmosphere or nightmare, depending where you were. And then oh, there right. was like atmosphere, the harbingers. Uh, and so and in that one, he's like even more moldy. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry. Does uh, this does this roll for crit video have a Rick roll in it? Is that what you just like? Was that what scrubbed was? over? Yeah, know. probably. <laughs> I think there's a Rick roll in there somewhere. Oh my gosh! Maybe at the end. Um, but Chris, I am so jealous. It's so good. Maybe I just and... hallucinated a Rickroll. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I'm so there. jealous that you own it. I yeah. I tried so badly to find a copy of the a playable copy of this for yeah. a Halloween stream back on oh, yeah. the CGE channel, and they go for like hundreds of dollars now. So if you yeah. if we can ever find like a DVD player, I would I would I would well, die. No, it's on I would the whole thing would... on YouTube. The hour, oh. the hour is can on YouTube. Can we like, play at a uploaded. con? I would give 100%. anything. Anything yeah, yeah, to like yeah. rent out a room at a con and yeah. get all dark and spooky. That's I've great. always wanted to play this. I oh my it's god! So you roll, you try to collect keys, and then you have to go to the middle. You got to go back to where you started because uh, everybody starts in a random spot. And generally, mm -hmm. you'll be like you'll you'll get the roll asymmetric rolls. Come on now, um, <laughs> oh. you, you, uh, and you might become. You have ten minutes to become a roll, and if you don't, you become a soul ranger who basically you, is impossible to win the game. But you just run around and chase people with <laughs> skulls. You don't get any access. That sounds awesome. Awesome. It's just, it's completely that awful. Sounds... Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, and so, and then you got to get back to the fr to the start, and then you reach into this little bucket where everybody's written down their deepest, darkest fears, and if you don't pull out your fear, you've conquered fear, and uh, you win the game. Like, you have to get all six keys and get back wow. to the start. Um, wow. I, I yeah. would give anything. Yeah, fantastic. I would totally but it's only this. Yeah. it's only number it's it's at the bottom of our list because my other two are even better. So I could talk oh, about I this for wait. hours, but I gotta, wait. we gotta move on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, great choice for number twelve to kick things off. Uh, the games that we thought we'd uh, hate, but we actually love. So number twelve is atmosphere. Number eleven is is to me. Uh, this game, I had I had sort of was sort of curious about it growing up, but I never got a chance to play it, and it's only within the last 10 years that I learned how to play it. It's a game that's been around for 3,000 years or so called Backgammon. Uh, this is an mm. abstract game. I had no idea what I was in for when I just uh, learned how to play it. The only reason why I wanted to play it, folks, I'm going to be totally honest, um, I used to play poker. And at poker night, there would be hands where I wouldn't play. I'd just fold my cards. And then on the side, me and the other players who weren't in the hand were like, what are we going to do? We're just sitting there talking. Let's learn how to play backgammon. We can gamble uh -huh. on backgammon instead. And yeah, so that's how I got into it. I went on to, I, I don't know if I watched, no, I didn't watch the YouTube video. This is actually relatively new. I went and downloaded a program called New Backgammon, GNU, and it was like a backgammon tutorial program. And I learned it and it turned out I loved it. This is an abstract game. It's a race. You're trying to race all your checkers off the board. There are certain ways that you move on the board. Um, when there's two or more checkers on one space, that space is considered locked and you cannot um, land on that as an opponent. You have to go over that. And um, if you land on a single checker, you're going to punch your opponent. Well, not punch, but uh, your opponent goes onto the off the board you just... and you have to roll a certain number to get back on it. Uh, so it's, it's a race game. It's got dice. It's got luck. Um, but... There's a bunch of math involved in it, and that's why I'm not a great backgammon player because the whole math thing sort of escapes me. But mm. it's so much fun. Um, you play it usually in like a best two out of three or whatever, and um, I I turn out to be a big fan. I play it all the time now on BGA, and um, I'm always looking for a backgammon uh, buddy. So if you play backgammon, folks, hit me up because I would love to play. And that's why it's our number eleven games that I thought I would hate because I had no idea what it was, but I turned out to love backgammon. 
I love how Backgammon comes in a little suitcase. I think yeah. you gotta bring that back. Yeah. That's my favorite part of Backgammon is a little suitcase. Isn't that, that cool? In. Yeah. And I have mine, Ray. I still have I bought my set from Toys R Us many years ago for yeah. like eight bucks or something. And I still have nice. that's the only set I have. I would love to get one of those like, you know, uh heirloom pre it's just a beautiful piece. Yeah, but... yeah. We had one of those passed down in, in my family. I don't I don't oh. play it enough. Oh you don't do you play it? Do you know how to play or I know how to play. I just ha I haven't played backgammon in years. Oh. What about you, Chris? Was backgammon a thing? I, I've played backgammon. I played it in university. I I had a, a oh, okay. friend who who really enjoyed it and she taught me. Uh, and yeah, it was like pretty solid. I was that's like, yeah, this isn't too, this isn't too bad. Yeah, it, it's a it's a terrific uh, abstract game. So that's our number eleven, folks. Backgammon. Let's move on to number ten. And Ray, mm. let's talk about number ten. My number ten. All right. Uh, my entry for this list is Shake That City, uh, which is an AEG game that came out like a year or two ago. Um, and this is on my list because I typically don't like gimmicky games and at first mm. i saw this mm. and i was like this looks like a gimmick this looks silly um the art style really isn't uh isn't my jam it's like that very minimalist kind of like i don't know th this nothing about this game appealed to me uh and then you can actually go back and see the moment the the moment that this game won me over is actually recorded on twitch i used to do these streams uh for cge where i would walk around the convention hall, li literally live streaming like nine hours a day, me walking around like doing Gen Con. I was just live on Twitch for that period of time. Uh, and I would sit down and I would do demos live of games. And I, I sit down to play Shake That City because they had a chair and I was tired. And that was the only reason I sat down. I was like, please let me sit in this chair and, <laughs> and then talk to me, please. Um, so I did that and they had me shake the, that, little, that little yellow box and press a little button and then it pooped out a perfect three by three uh, cube cube grid, like a grid of cubes that was perfect three by three. And I was like, oh my God, I, I have to know everything about this game now because that is just a really cool little piece of engineering. And basically once I actually started to play this game, I realized that it's really, I wouldn't classify it as a gimmick because uh, I'll explain the mechanics in a second, but like that ability to randomize a three by three grid like that there's not a really another clean, efficient way to do that without this cool little contraption that they've made. Like maybe you could do it with cards and stuff, but it'd be clunky and annoying. Like this is actually a gimmick that I find really uh, fits the game. And so just quickly put the mechanics of the game. You shake up this little box that has cubes in it. Again, you poop out that little three by three <laughs> grid. And then you have a starting player who picks one of those colors and so say in that example, you just saw maybe it was red and there were two, two red cubes on top of each other. You, that person then places the red buildings on their own personal little city plot in the exact orientation that they show up in that three by three grid. Um, regardless of where you are at the table, you're always going to place them down exactly as the orientation as they show up on that little um, as they as they get pooped out, you're going to put them on your board in the exact same orientation. So the main player is going to pick a color and then everyone else can pick any of the other colors. And it's basically just a really clever little spatial um, tile placement game where you're trying to fit all your buildings onto your little city plot while trying to hit various scoring objectives, like trying to have, you know, uh, roads connecting to the outside of the city and stuff like that. Um, but man, that that little mechanism is so it's so clever and it's so cool. And it really, really won me over despite just personal preference. The appearance of this game doesn't really do much for me, um, but I was really, really won over by it. And so that's uh, Shake That City. Yeah, this is oh, I love this game. I'm so glad it made the list, and I love the how you're describing the the box thingy pooping out of the cubes because it literally is. It's you know you shake yeah, it up. But it's it's and just, so satisfying. It really is, right? It's and, so nice. And I can I, see how that would be sort of like oh, it's a gimmick, whatever. But it really is uh, really integral to gameplay, cool. and it does a really yeah. great job of uh, you know making uh, the gameplay streamlined and. Yeah, because I, I couldn't imagine not doing it without the, the cube pooper thingy. You know, Anything else I feel would be way more cumbersome. And they yeah. also managed oh, to yeah, make it out sure. of chipboard too. So it's 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 still a very like reasonable yeah. price point. They didn't make yep. it, like you could obviously over engineer that, but they, they kept it like very low price point, but it still yeah. functions really well. I've been using mine since I got it. Mm -hmm. I play this game pretty regularly and it's never never broken on me or anything like that. So nice. yeah, that's great. I, I really just wanted the super cut 
uh, right after Ray says, you know, I don't really like gimmicky games. Hard cut to every like obscure <laughs> thing that Ray has said. I was I... like, can you just say that this this whole this whole list was gonna be not that? Like, I'm not that huge on gimmicky <laughs> games. Oh, you get okay. to drop stuff. Oh, yum yum island, you throw. All right, it on the all right, ground. all right. You just zip it, zip it. Let me, I love let me it. explain. I love let it. me explain. <laughs> I like gimmicky party games. I don't like. When, when you take a strat a medium <laughs> strategy game and then you add a gimmick. That's what I mean. That's but fair. I do appreciate the call out because boy, I, I do love a gimmick. I do. But that's my that's what I mean is I, I find that there's a especially on Kickstarter and stuff, you want that like flashy yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need and something. And I yeah, find forward. that there's a trend of strategy games that are kind of meh that get a yeah. gimmick attached onto them, and then I'm like, all right. Yeah. This is what I thought this was, right? Right. It's not a party game. It's a strategy game yeah. with what I thought was a gimmick, but turned out to be like a really cool integral mechanism to how the game functions. Right. And that's right. won me over. But yeah. you mean, I yes, that's I do like my, <laughs> my paper blindfolds and Yum Yum Island and all that jazz. Uh, correct. It's Solid so call out. <laughs> great call out. Um, let's see what Richard thinks of all this uh, and our shenanigans. Oh Richard, take it away with our number nine. Okay, okay. This is a uh, fun topic, trying to turn something negative into something positive. I love it. Although, Chris, I've heard of Atmosphere, but I don't know anything about it. So, I'll just uh, look forward to seeing what you have to say. <laughs> well, backgammon? Uh, I think... I, I can't quite join you on that one. I did try playing it once many, many years ago and could not find it very engaging at all. But someday, man, you've got to get yourself to Greece because backgammon is practically the national pastime there. Uh, um, everybody grows up playing it. Every family has their heirloom uh, board. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's been around as long as it has. There must be something good to it. And I look forward to hearing you explain why you love it. And uh, Ray, shake that city! Why should you hate this? This is a wonderful game. Everybody should enjoy it. I, that one really confused me. What could you possibly not like about this game? I am now more intrigued than ever to see the full show once uh, the live stream goes up. But anyway, folks, uh, let me tell you about number nine on our list. There's... There's a few things that I just can't stand in uh, board gaming. Uh, you know, mechanisms predominantly. And one of them is pick up and deliver. Now, many, many years ago, I did a top 10 pick up and deliver games with uh, Tom Vassell of uh, the Dice Tower and, uh, and Jason Levine as well. And honestly, I had a hard time even coming up with that list. And some people would say that I, did, I cheated and didn't even put pick up and deliver games on it. But our combined number nine is a relatively new uh, pick up and deliver game that I have fallen in love with. Comet just came out last year. It is about um, playing cards to a uh, hatch prehistoric animals on the board and then spending those same cards. It's a multi-use card game where uh, we either hatch the animals that need saving or we sacrifice the animals, uh, you know, d discard the cards because they also have movement points on it. And we use them to move the uh, animals closer and closer to safety. There is a sanctuary uh, because the comet is coming. Everybody's going to get wiped out. And we're trying to save as many animals as possible. And uh, yeah, there, I don't think anybody could call this anything other than pick up and deliver. Uh, it is all about, uh, you know, you pick up, i.e., put these things on the board, and then slowly, very slowly, move them across the board. And that's everything I hate about pick up and deliver. Most of the time when I like a pick up and deliver game, it's because it's really fast and snappy. And yeah, okay, I'm picking something up, but then effectively I teleport where I need to go, or um, something like that. This game, it takes a while, although it's got some really fun elements. You know, the fact that, I mean, there's there's a, a healthy dose of checkers in this game because players can hopscotch over each other if you can get into the right position at the right time. But the thing that really makes it special is once you have successfully delivered an animal to safety, you keep that card and unlock the special ability on that card that's going to help you rescue more animals later on. And so the game has a really wonderful growth curve as we get more and more powerful the more and more animals we save as time is ticking and running down to when the inevitable comet will come and wipe out anything we couldn't save. Yeah, 
I generally can't stand pick up and deliver because it's just so ho-hum boring and my wife is pretty much the same. And yet, she gave this a rare 5 out of 5 stars on her Gen Jog show, which means this might be in her top 10 games of the year, quite frankly, which is really saying something. And I think it's really great too. Um, one of those rarities, a game I should hate, pick up and deliver, and yet I love, number 9 is Comet. Wow, I never would have thought I'd see a game like Comet on Richard's list. I know he he and Jen are not pick up and deliver fans. I am. I enjoy pick up and deliver games, but uh, this one looks cool. I, I like the fact that it has that like he called it checkers, where you can like sort of hopscotch over players. That's always fun and interesting. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, that's a really good choice for a game that he thinks he would hate but actually love. So thank you, Richard. Yeah. Uh, that's you um, any uh, any thoughts on that before we move on, friends? No thoughts at all. I want to talk about me. Yeah, yeah. that's what we're here to do. <laughs> Let's move on to our next game. Uh, Chris, you've got a good one for us, my friend. Well, let's, I do uh, have a good one. It. It's not It's not this this beautiful Star Trek oh! VCR, the board game. Wow. It's not that as I pass it through the frame. Nice. It's not, and honestly, I don't own a copy of it, so I wish this could be a beautiful reveal of, of what it is. It's oh. not Atmosphere, the Harbingers. Wow. The um, Harbingers. Which is the better version of Atmosphere. <laughs> Um, no, this is a game that brings me an incredible amount of joy. My friend Montana and university had a copy and this is an older game also from 1991 atmosphere and nightmare, both from 90, 1991. Well, at nightmare, the original one is from 91. Um, this one is a game called, uh, electronic dream phone, uh, <laughs> oh. also known as dream phone. Yes. The premise, phone. the premise of dream phone is that there is a boy who has a crush on every person who's playing this game. Um, you can see in the, oh, dang it, they didn't get the, They didn't get it. They're looking for their love um, in, in this commercial that's passing by our screen. It's bringing me so, like, if you think about this theme, there's one boy who has a crush on everyone. <laughs> and the point of the game is to find out who this boy is, because if you can find out who that boy is first, you get to be with that boy. Um, and, and just that as a concept. And so it's like a clue thing. You go through and you're like, Hey, d Hey, um, I'm going to call, call my boy's friend, uh, who tells me all the secrets. Hey, do you, do you, does he like baseball? No, or yeah, no, he doesn't like baseball. Okay, cool. So you cross out the boys who like baseball and you're just trying to whittle down all the boys. So you, you can find eventually who that hunky man is, who definitely has a crush on just you and will create a very meaningful relationship with you and not because they've got a crush on everyone and are forcing <laughs> everyone to fight for their for his affections in this weird sadistic cage match uh comes with this beautiful <laughs> pink phone you get to you get to punch in the numbers and call people and it'll be like he likes he likes most movies or he likes most food but not pizza. And you're like, okay, and now I know that he doesn't like pizza. And you're like trying to whittle this down. You can be like, speakerphone, tell everybody around the table what he likes. It's kind of just like a clue style game. Yeah. I, I do love that this is this is just clues, but for yeah. girls. It's, yeah. It's... <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful representation of its time and uh, and how we should market to to young to the young women of tomorrow. Mm, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just horrendous like it's horrendous when you think of it but it's so so funny when you actually think about the theme it's like because because the theme is like you're gonna find the boy who's got a crush on you but like for mechanically there can only be one boy so it's not like there's everyone's like racing to find their own special person right and having like a long lasting no it's this piece of garbage who's <laughs> who's like i can't wait it's this it's this um something boy you know to keep it in polite conversation who's called who's ringing up everyone being like who wants to go on a date with me now and we're just falling into his lap for some reason oh just blaze being blaze and and just being being pulled into his his ineffable lure um but it's just it's so it's so funny to me it's so funny and if somebody was like hey do you want to play dream phone like a resounding yes a hundred percent like it's not right now, it's not it's not a good game no way no way is it a good game in any sense of it but is it an amazing game yes it's not 100%. good it's amazing such so, a perfect right. encapsulation of what it's like to be uh, a girl. In fact, yeah. in case you didn't yeah. know, um, yeah. I'm here to, to confirm. <laughs> you can that confirm that's, it. That's girlhood right there. Let perfect. me tell you. 
<laughs> well, that's what I like about it too. Yeah, it really helps me like re really see. Yeah, uh, it helps see, you see the, the other, you know, the the the, the female experience, which yeah. is what I'm, I'm interested 100%. in generally. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait hilarious. to hear what Richard says about this. <laughs> me neither. I can't I wait. Think. It's just fantastic, <laughs> and it has what to make sense. Uh, and like, I was so like, oh, we played at a university, and man, we had a freaking amazing time. Oh, I bet you did. I bet I hope. Blast. I hope Montana. I hope you still have a copy. In fact, I'm going to text her right now, and we'll see if she replies while this stream is going on. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's all about that uh, pink phone uh, for me. Well, what a component that is! That's brilliant. Uh, great choice, Chris. Number eight, electronic dream phone. Let's move on to our number seven. That's going to be on me. Uh, this is a game. Now, I the first word in the title of this game, I saw the word, and I was like, I immediately, nope, I'm not going to like this game. But then the next two words. Showed up. I was like, okay, now I've got to give it a shot because uh, number seven, it is Risk Star Wars. So Risk, not a not a fan. I mean, I played it before, but it just wasn't my jam. But y'all know I love Star Wars, so I of course I had to try it, and surprisingly, I actually love this game. Um, from what I hear, friends that have uh, the Queen's Gambit, which is one of my Grail games, I'd love to mm -hmm. own it someday. They say it's a really streamlined version of that, and um, that's what got me hooked. And I end up buying a copy of it, and I, I really enjoy it. Um, you're basically battling on three fronts. You have the Death Star in the middle. You're trying to blow that up. But just like in Return of the Jedi, which this movie, this game is based on, you have to blow up the uh, the shield generator down on Endor. So you got to go through stormtroopers. And then on the other side, you have a third front you're battling. Luke Skywalker versus his dad. Uh, spoiler alert, his dad, uh, Darth Vader. Can he bring him over to whoa, the dark whoa, side? Whoa, whoa, Yeah, wow. sorry, Ray. I shouldn't hey, have said anything. Spoiler alert. Yeah. That, was, that was not a quick enough whoa. spoiler alert. Yeah, there, I'm well. sorry. I spoiled the oh, ending. Oh, no! The big secret of a 40-year-old <laughs> movie. My bad, folks. Um, so... And so you have three different fronts, and it's really cool because um, you have to, you have to, it's a balancing act. As the rebellion or you know, the rebels, can you get to the shield generator, take down the shield, and at the same time get the Millennium Falcon into the Death Star to blow it up? And you've got a ton of TIE fighters uh, going at you. And at the same time, third thing going on. Luke versus uh, Darth Vader. If Darth Vader manages to bring Luke to the uh, to the dark side, then you're going to lose cards. You're going to do all these you know things that make it tougher for you to win the game. And I love it. Now, having said that, it is skewed towards the rebel side because hey, again, spoiler alert number two: the rebels win at the end. Oh. Ray, sorry. Um, might as but, well not even watch it now. Yeah, you might as well just yeah forget it. It's it's garbage. But. Anyways, it's it's still dice rolling, but it has some hand management, which I like. Uh, you do have some decisions to make. It's not just, you know, standard risk. It, it's thematically really interesting to me. It's Return of the Jedi, the board game, and that's why it's our number seven, Risk Star Wars. Nice. That's pretty good. That's a good pick. I, I haven't played this one. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of different, like, Risk offshoots that are still like surprisingly good and different from risk and they get a yep. bad name like a bad name quote unquote because everybody's had like those day long experiences of risk and are like yep. i'm never playing anything risk again yep. but like mm -hmm. that queen's gambit and uh 2040 ad as well it's like it only mm -hmm. takes takes like five turns to play yeah um, yeah so and that's, that's one thing I, that's really nice, i'm so. glad you pointed that out chris because um i totally forgot to mention that yeah risk usually takes hours and hours if not days and days to play <clears> whereas <throat> risk star wars it, you knock it out in like 60 minutes or so even shorter than the movie i just spoiled from 40 years ago so it's yeah a, yeah, it's yeah. A terrific, yeah. Uh, terrific there game. you go okay i let's... can <laughs> i just want to drop a little a little secret we may have if you like uh risk oh. games that take a spin on the concept of risk I don't Ooh. know. We might have something sometime right. in the future. All right. From the, check out the op. Yeah. Check the op, folks. The op website every day yes. until you find out. Yes. <laughs> I'm refreshing constantly. Make nice. it your homepage. <laughs> I cannot wait. Uh, let's move on to number six. So, Ray, you've got our next That's game for me. us. My next one, um, I'm going to try to not talk about this one for a long time because it has uh, conveniently been brought up in the last couple of streams, but my number six is Decorum. Mm. Um, and I know that the new expansion was a sponsor for last stream. Mm. So I talked a little bit briefly at the start of last at last uh, r, r show about how much I love this game. But it, this is on this list because I hate co-ops pretty mm -hmm. much blanketly there. I'm very, very picky when it comes to co-ops. Um, and I also don't really like deduction games a whole lot. I When it's just purely who can figure the thing out first, it, if for some reason mechanically... I don't love it, but when it's put together the way the co-op and the deduction is put together 
in decorum, the way those two mechanics kiss in this game, I don't know, it, it tickles my brain in such a unique and fun way that it is one of the very few co-op games that I own in my collection. So very briefly, Decorum, it's, uh, what is it? It's a passive aggressive game of cohabitation. Um, I typically play this at two players. That tends to be where I like it the most. I've had some luck with three players, but I typically like to play this with my partner because it's kind of funny and ironic to be passively aggressively fighting over your house with your actual real life partner. And basically you each have secret win conditions. You want maybe, for example, to um, have one painting of every color and the other person uh, wants all the blue paintings upstairs or whatever. You have a handful of those requirements and on your turn, you can add an item to the house, you can remove an item from the house or you can swap something. And all you're allowed to say when the other person does something is, uh, I love that. I feel eh about that, or I absolutely despise that. And if you get kind of fun and into the like passive aggression and you 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 flower your language a little bit more, it can be kind of a fun, almost pseudo role-playing game because all the scenarios give you like a little bit of backstory about who these people are. I really like role-playing games. So I will insert that into any game where you give me the chance to. Um, but yeah, no, I just really love the way this collaborative deduction works. Again, typically deduction, don't like it. Cooperation with other people, God forbid. Nothing I hate more. Um, <laughs> when it doesn't work in this game, it just really clicks for me. So this is a game, if you just saw on paper my preferences as a gamer, you wouldn't expect to work for me, but I actually really, really love it. Yeah, nice. great, great that, choice. That vocalizing, I didn't, when we talked about it previously, I didn't realize <laughs> the only things you could say were, I hate that. And I mean, come on, as I yeah. already knew I was going to enjoy this game, and I, now I need to go out and Yeah, <laughs> you can really only, and you can do variation. I love to like slam my hands on oh, the table yeah. and be like, I'm come sure. on, I literally, yeah. I hate it. It's yeah. ugly and I hate it, get out of my house. <laughs> like, it's I just, was... it's social, there's, there's, a, there's an interaction, the interactivity to this game. Yeah. that I just really, really love. It, it's so cooperative, but you yeah. can't quarterback. Like, it's not possible. That's my my, my big pet peeve with a lot of co-op games is quarterbacking. But because of that yeah. communication barrier, yeah. you literally can't do that. And you just yeah. have to stare into the other person's eyes and be like, really hate what you just did. I, really I, I will I will admit I was I was picturing for like 50% of when you were describing this because you said I play this with my partner I don't, and I love being passive aggressive. I pictured your hidden goals at the end are just turned <laughs> over like you didn't unload the dishwasher. It's like that's not even <laughs> the game. It's like you you wronged me two months ago in front of my mother. I'm like what? this is just No a that's fog of love. You're oh, mixing yeah, yeah. 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 Nice. <laughs> you know I'm the same way uh Ray I I'm not the biggest deduction fan and not the mm -hmm. uh, cooperative game are they're okay but this one uh just the way they set it up that i think it's that uh that communication barrier right i think that's what really drives this game and having yeah. I, I just it cracks me up the whole passive aggressive thing it, it's hilarious to me when you're playing it it's Lovely. yeah really good choice okay so let's see what richard's got for us at number five richard take it away okay continuing on and this is going to be a very interesting list to watch chris i have never heard of electronic dream phone it certainly sounds like something that one should not like and i look forward to hearing more and well risk star wars yeah sure of course where is he i assume you must have you know signed away your soul to george lucas at some point because of your undying love for all things star wars doesn't matter what it is of course you're gonna love it. you have no choice you're contractually obligated surely and ray decorum Okay, I get it, because I remember in a recent episode you talked about how uh, you're really not that into co-op games. And yeah, I've heard this over and over and over again uh, from lots of different channels, from folks who tend not to like co-op games, that Decorum is the one that they love. So that's uh, a cool one, definitely. And now let's move on to number five. Here's another thing I tend to hate, folks. Direct player conflict. And while there have been games over the years that Jen and I have found ourselves enjoying, where we go head to head and try to beat each other down, almost inevitably, even if we like them, they don't tend to stay on my shelf. They tend to disappear over time. But there's one that has stood the test of time, survived through multiple callings, and I love it to pieces, even though, honestly, I should hate it. It's our number five on the list, Capo de Copy, from friend of the show, um, Dr. Steve Finn, who was on an R&R, &R, what was it, about a month ago, uh, talking 
talking about filler games, and he was a great guest. Loved having him on. And um, wherever you are, Dr. Finn, I've still got my Capo to copy, and I still love it to pieces. And Jen loves it, too. And she has a different reason she should hate it, because it is all about Prohibition-era gangsters trying to settle turf wars in New York. And this is a subject matter Jen would normally hate. And yet she loves the game because the gameplay is so good. And both Jen and I, like I said, tend to shy away from games where we're constantly butting heads and trying to tear what each other tear down what each other has built up. This is basically a what is it a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven front tug of war as we are constantly um, drafting dice to push our way in or not drafting dice, uh, rolling dice and then using them, uh, but combining them in different ways depending on what we roll to move into the different boroughs of New York and try to push the other player out. There are mind games aplenty because sometimes we push in and we don't reveal what we're pushing in with. And the, you know those to tokens go face down. Sometimes they're face up and we know what we're up against. Every one of the different areas has unique abilities associated with them. We can use our dice for you know uh, deploying influence in this you know area control combat game. Or we can use them for lots of other stuff too. It's a brilliant design. And honestly... Honestly, I have a hard time saying why this one survived the cut when so many other great uh, in-your-face combat games that Jen and I enjoyed didn't stick with us. I'll talk about some of them in the post-show. Folks, did you know there is a post-show? Link for it down in the show notes. Go to the extended edition of this show, and we'll have a few more. I've got several more I could have talked about here. you know. Um, but Coppa to Copy stands the test of time. It is so clever, so much fun. One of Steve Finn's all-time greats, and the man has a lot of really great designs. It's Number five on our list, Capo de Copy, a game I love, but I really should hate. Wow, another one that I never would have expected uh, Richard to like. Now, I've heard about this game. I've not played it, but I love Steve Finn games. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Steve uh, a few months ago on the show. Uh, he does. He's like the master of the 20, 30-minute uh, filler type game. So mm -hmm. uh, this one mm -hmm. I'm curious. To, uh, I'd, I'd love to check it out. It seems like something I would have no problem uh, enjoying, uh, but it's nice to see that Richard uh, has kept it through many cullings and many moves. Um, yeah, that, that speaks to it, right? Like, yeah. It makes yeah, it through absolutely. a purge. Yeah. I know, like Ray, Ray can vouch for this. Ray's a big oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, if it makes it through, it earns its spot on the shelf. Yeah. Yes, my notoriously cutthroat purges. Yes, absolutely. Not yeah. my hoarding tendencies. <laughs> and if you want to learn more about Ray's hoarding tendencies, be sure to check out oh. that free show, folks. Uh, <laughs> click on the link below and we talk about that. What a with, hook. With all kinds of other things. Um, speaking of... <laughs> That's what we're titling it. Ray's hoarding tendencies. <laughs> Ray's it's hoarding the new tendencies. show. Welcome to the R&R right &R show. The R stands for Ray's hoarding tendencies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris, why don't we go on to our number four? On the list of right. games that we should I'm, hate but actually love. I'm very, very excited. I'm very excited to talk about this. But I do have a very sad update for those of you following along at home. Montana, my good friend Montana. She says, I, I think I lost it only recently when my parents sold their house. So if, oh. if you bought a Deeply house upsetting. recently, just anywhere. And there's <laughs> a hot pink phone. Toronto, and a uh, <laughs> but look... Look in your basement. Uh, there might be a copy of Dream Phone. That's and awesome. Montana also says that her favorite is Brad, in case you were oh. wondering. Oh. Hey, girl. <laughs> so I was trying to find a picture of Brad. That's awesome. I'll, I'll, maybe I can find one when Rado's next game happens, because it gives me an excuse not to listen to him. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, no, Brad. I'm very excited. I'm very excited to talk about my my uh, my number one. This is this this game came about. I genuinely enjoy this game. It's so stupid. You shouldn't own it, but you should. Um, it 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 was at my friend my friend Dave's cottage. Um, he had this game that was like a little like Hasbro style game. It was incredible, and I put it as my number one cottage game. It's like the number one cottage game that you want to play. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful game called Bounce Off, and it has Bounce Off invaded my life ever since. The glory of bounce off. Matt and Dave were so mad I put it as the number one party game, but it doesn't matter. You bounce the balls, you sink the shots, you get the win, uh, and you have to bounce the balls into the thing to make a pattern. Uh, you can see this awesome commercial that's happening right now as they bounce those. Oh, she missed. Oh, yes, he got it. He got. Oh, look at look at this. Look at look at how intense this is. 
right? Look at how it look. Look at the celebration that was just happened when they created. It. Look at the high fives, the happiness, the joy, the family coming together. There's nothing that's better than bounce off in this world. Not even the Timu fake game <laughs> bounce. <laughs> No, there's a, there's a game bounce forgery boo. out there, and I no. need to take this op- I need to take this opportunity to chastise Timu um, because of this this grave, grave forgery of game bounce. I mean, I had to I had to see it for myself. And yes, there are <laughs> ping pong balls, and yes, there's a little grid that you can bounce them in, and yes, there are cards that l- might as well be paper. Uh, they got the quality <laughs> correct in both versions <laughs> of the thinnest cards imaginable and no way to hold them in the box. And and the box be, oh, being just wide enough so that the cards will fly out through the slit <laughs> in the opening and you eventually will lose all of them. But it doesn't matter because, <laughs> because bounce off is a way of life. Okay? Bounce off. <laughs> Is is the joy of beer pong without the drinking? Bounce off is you, you just lost just me. just bouncing. Just, you just bounce a little ping pong ball into it. It's a it's a carnival game in your home. Like you you never have to go to the carnival again if you have this in your life. You just need a long table or a short table or a floor. You could play bounce off anywhere. You could play it on carpets. You could play it on walls. You could play it outside. The possibilities are endless, and when you get a game this versatile uh, that brings such life and joy to the scene, it can't not be included in everything. It's a perfect solo game. It's a perfect co-op game. Oh it's a God, perfect a... non-co-op game. That would have been a great what, April Fool's video is how to play Bounce Off solo, and it's just you. Oh. <laughs> Sadly <laughs> playing a game. It wouldn't be an April Fool's video. It would be a, a real video. Person, it would be a valuable, valuable content <laughs> for the for the masses to enjoy. Oh, my uh, goodness. Let's, I want to hear us rise up in the comments for Bounce Off. Yeah. Praise our Lord and Savior Bounce Off. It doesn't matter <laughs> what nonsense you are going to be speaking about for our next three. We know the list ends here. Thank you, everybody, for watching the R&R show. Um, <laughs> I'm your host, with George, with these three yahoos. It doesn't matter what they're going to say. Turn off your television or go to the television where we'll have extra ones. Maybe we'll give you a sneak peek at that extended edition right now of the ones that didn't make the cut. But this is our number one game, collectively, Bounce Off. Oh my gosh. Amazing. I I remember seeing this back in the day, Chris, and I always wanted a copy, but I don't know. It's fantastic. It's it looks hilarious. And like you said, it's a carnival game at home. That's it's all it is. And it's silly yeah. and it's fun. It looks fun and hilarious. And God, I want that kid's haircut. That like that teenage boy. <laughs> I mean just everything game. about this sings. That, you gives know. Me, of cool. that gives me greater joy. I mean, Dream Phone really comes close, but but Bounce Off just edged it out, and that's that's tough. Yeah, that is tough am. because Dream Phone brings me a lot of joy. <laughs> yeah, even more joy than Brad brings Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, nice. I don't know how the heck we're gonna follow this up. This is a fantastic, Chris. Bounce Man, Off at our number four games that we uh, <laughs> thought we'd hate but we actually love. But I'm gonna try my best uh, with our number three, our collective number three. This is the game that has. It's the only one in my collection that plays as long as it does, as epic as it does. It's a game that I never thought I would enjoy as much as I do. And it actually turned out to be my favorite game of all time. Yes, we're following Bounce Off with Twilight Imperium, folks. Uh, nice, this game, nice. absolutely brilliant. And, you know, when I, I always wanted to try it just because I've heard all the stories of you got to take all day to play it. Um, it's a race to 10 points, only 10 points, it's like a filler game, right? 10 victory points, but there's so much to this game and it's just completely epic. It's a 4X game. You start in one corner of the galaxy and you hope to go throughout and expand your fleet and, uh, punch people in the face and win the game, uh, after many, many hours, um, what else can I say about it? all? Uh, one thing I will say is uh, this video. Uh, check out Shay's video, Shay Parker's video, folks, because he's got the ultimate way to learn the game. He does it in such a great way. It's only it's only about a thirty five minute teach to Shay. But anytime I play this game, if there's a new player, I direct them that video because Shay does the best job of explaining the game. Um, I'm not going to explain it here because it will take up another hour or so, but um, it's a Forex game. You're building your fleet. You go out, explore. You're going to exploit, get more resources, and complete missions. Uh, there are secret missions. There are public missions. You all just go out and try to do your thing and hopefully 
come out on top after you've taken your nap break, your lunch break, your dinner break, and all the different <laughs> breaks. And um, at the end of it, it's to me, it's such a rewarding experience. And I never would have thought that I'd like this game because most of the games I like to play tend to be light to medium weight. They tend to be 60 to 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. This one, I've, I've literally played this game. The longest game I've played, I think it was just under 12 hours of Twilight Imperium. And oh my God. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my, my, my that's yeah. totally my reaction, Ray. I would never think that and I was captivated the entire time. Every single game I've played Twilight Imperium has stories upon stories upon stories. And anytime I've played the game, or I talk about the game with anyone that I've played with before, we always talk about those big moments. And those are the type of things. Whether you're playing a you know game like Bounce Off, which has stories built into it, obviously, or a game like obviously. Twilight Imperium, you know, uh, you have stories for days. And that's why it's our collective number three, Twilight Imperium. Uh, I thank you for honoring Bounce Off in that, I had in that breakdown, Raul. I'm glad you could see the epic nature. Um, I, I know there's so many people who love Twilight Imperium. Uh, Twilight Imperium, I think, is the reverse of this list for me. Games that I thought I should love and then didn't. Oh, uh, it, interesting. It, it, is, it, it checks, like, follow mechanic. That's one of my yep. favorite mechanics. Yep. It, like, it's so good. There, there's so many things about it that I was so excited, and it just never hit with me. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. but, uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that it hits with so many people. For me, I prefer Dune or Galactic yeah. Era. Um, both yeah. of those I like for my 4X sort of scratching of the itch. Yeah. To, to give yeah. them their shout outs. And that, and that's, and that's totally fair too. You know, um, it's definitely not, uh, it's not for everyone, but I, if, uh, I, I always say for, uh, folks who are into the hobby, I give it a shot. You know, I, I think it's one of yeah. those games you should at least give it a shot and see, uh, you never know, because for me, I gave it a shot, and I end up loving it, and um, yeah, it's fantastic. Okay, speaking of games that we thought we'd hate, but actually love, Ray, you've got the number two on the list. All right, so continuing my my trend of, of Normcore picks that everyone's going to be like, why, why wouldn't you like this? Uh, it's because uh, <laughs> I owed no other game like this game. Uh, so my, my number two is Root, nice. and it is the only... War game, area control game, anything even adjacent to those mechanics just never have never appealed to me. And that is largely mm -hmm. due to the theming of those games just have no appeal for me. I typically don't like games where you can dogpile someone and I just area control. Again, this is the only game in my collection that it involves those mechanics and largely because of the art. I know that's like a very, uh, you know, tired like reason why I know everyone like I feel like people say that a lot like the arts what got them into it but for me truly that is what drew me into this game and I'm very grateful for that because now I have a war game in an area control game that I actually really really enjoy in my collection and if it did not have this classic leader game art and these adorable little wooden creature woodland creatures I would not have picked it up I just wouldn't have I like it took this game for me to get over the hump of understanding what kind of war games I can actually like enjoy. And they actually click with me. Um, if you've never heard of Root before, I'll just give the quick explanation. This is a very famous game in the hobby, so I won't, I won't belabor it too much, but despite its colorful and cutesy appearances, it is pretty much at its heart a war game. You are going to be taking on, in the base game, you're gonna be taking on one of four little woodland factions, and you're going to be uh, drawing cards, moving your troops around on a board and fighting each other for dominance of the forest. And what I really enjoy about this is it's asymmetric. And that's the other reason why you would think it doesn't work for me because I have a really hard time getting asymmetry to the table with my gaming group. I tend to play with newer gamers and I am the designated teacher in my group and having to sit there and teach everyone four separate rule sets, people just don't want to do that. But what I love about Root is that the base mechanics are all the same. And I also love that even though you're doing different things with your asymmetry, for the most part, you're using the same um, components. So yes, like the Marquis de Cat get their little like wood tokens and whatever, but like those core cards are the same for everyone. You're just doing something different with them. It's not like everyone has their own unique deck where I have to go through and explain everyone's individual deck. The cards are the same. The suits just do different things. Like when you have the Eerie, you're creating this, those are the bird people. You're creating almost this like programming engine where every time you do the same actions over and over again until you 
effectively explode. And if you're playing the Woodland Alliance, you're taking those cards and turning them into, into like guerrilla recruits for your, your uprising. So the basics are actually, it feels less daunting to bring this to the table than other big asymmetric games. And it's a little bit of a trick because I'm like, oh, it's not that bad. And then I bring it to the table. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of a, this is kind of a dog to teach to people who are newer to the hobby. Yeah. But I love the art. I like that as asymmetric like war games like this go, it is a relatively easy teach. It hits like a board gaming part of my brain that I never expected a war game to hit. I remember like going to cons and walking by like the miniatures and the war gaming tables and being like, nothing about that appeals to me. I, don't, I like, I don't know what's going on here. It's not for me. And this was my bridge, my gateway game, which it was for a lot of people um, as well. And so, yeah, that's why, that's why I love this game. I, I, yeah. I've played so, so much Root. And if you explained the mechanics to me in a void, I probably like, would be shocked at how much I played this game. Yeah, it, it was a, a brilliant choice, Ray. I was the same yeah. way. Like I was, you know, you see uh, <clears throat> like typical war games, right? There's a map, there's a bunch of uh, chits and hexes, and it's like, okay, whatever. But yeah. the brilliant, uh, the brilliance of um, leader games coming out, and like, hey, let's put some really yeah. cute art and uh, keep the gameplay. And it's it really it really does. It's a, a gateway for those of us in the hobby into a different mm -hmm. genre, right? Uh, yeah, a little totally. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and I and I love that for that. And I'm, I haven't played Root as much as I want to. It's one of those games I just I know it's almost like a lifestyle game, right? I mean, there's so many people yeah. so die hard into it with all the different factions. Yeah. Um, it's something I, I would love to dive into a little bit more. Um, yeah, I will say if you're looking to just get more reps of this game, the the Steam version or the Switch version of this game is actually pretty. It's actually pretty solid. It's a really nice, nice implementation of it. Yeah. Yeah, That's this on... is one of my fr friends' p favorite games, and they always say, like, hey, you want to play Root with us? Great. Here's the Steam version. Go learn the factions. <laughs> yeah. <and come laughs> right? yeah, yeah, it's a really great it's learning tool to just play yeah. the tutorial yeah. Yeah. Um, on the Steam version. is really good. Yeah, nice. Okay, uh, so that's it. Except for Richard, he's got our number one. Richard, take it away. Right. Okay, Chris, what is this bounce off thing? Uh, I only first heard of it when it was in your uh, recent top thirty death match. Which, by the way, folks, if you have not watched it after you're done with this week's R and R, might I suggest heading over to Room and Board Review and uh, getting comfortable and watching Chris's excellent top thirty death match that he put up last week. I loved it so much. I mentioned it in the recap the other day. And spoiler alert. Whatever the heck bounce off is, it defeated um, Attack on Titan, the deck building game. And Chris, I felt that pain too because Attack on Titan is a criminally overlooked game. I mean, heck, have we done a uh, overlooked games thing? If not, it should totally be on the list. Such a great little deck builder, wonderful co-op game. I love it to pieces. And Chris, oh my gosh, that deathmatch, can I just say, was phenomenal. It's so worth making it to the end with all the weird little hints throughout. And then you get to your number one and I felt like I was watching a Christopher Nolan film, quite frankly. It was so awesome. Awesome. But anyway, folks, uh, we're here to do R&R &R stuff, not room and board stuff today, uh, but I highly recommend it. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, and then real, uh, Twilight Imperium. Yeah, yeah, that... That, I think, is the epitome of this list. Um, nobody should like that game. And uh, and I know you and Shay and so many people love it uh, to pieces. Someday I'll play it with you, well, someday. And maybe I'll understand. Because I from the, standing from the outside, I, I don't understand. And Ray, Root, yeah, that one makes perfect sense, too. I was very impressed by the game. Still hated it, though, when I actually had a chance to play it. But yeah, really impressive title. Again, another epitome of what this... Uh, this could be all about something normally you couldn't stand and yet somehow this one breaks the rules and that's certainly true for our combined number one folks for the longest time this game was in my personal top 10 of all time it has fallen over time maybe in part because i really should hate it and yet i still love it uh it is number one on our list marvel champions and here i am playing it with my wife jen uh and we also then played uh uh um, you know arkham horror or, you know, Arkham Final Horror. Final Hour. Regardless. Uh, it was a run-through I did a couple of years ago with Jen. Uh, I've played this a bunch of times on the channel, both as public videos and exclusive behind-the-scenes videos for Patreon backers. I love the game so much. Uh, up until last year, when they started rolling out the X-Men stuff, I was all in, getting every single expansion that came out and loving it to pieces. Um, but honestly, I should hate this game. I mean, not because it's a co-op game, not because it's a superhero game. These are all things I really love. But because, um, in spite of how brilliant the core card play is, and 
the incredible thematic implementation of uh, these superheroes that I love, because Make Mine Marvel, I've always been a Marvel Comics fan ever since I was a kid growing up in the 70s and um, you know buying them on the little turnstiles down at the local 7-Eleven. Um, I, I hate this game, or I should hate this game, because a sizable portion of it features effectively roll to resolve. And what I mean by that is games where you make a lot of plans, you figure out everything it is you want to do, you set them in motion, spend your resources, hope for the best, and then usually you have to roll some dice and the dice tell you whether you succeed or fail. It's a little bit different here because instead, uh, when the bad guys are going to attack, who are we fighting here? We're fighting Rhino in this one. It's me as She-Hulk and Janice Captain Marvel up against Rhino. After we declare who's going to defend, what special powers we're going to use, because we know Rhino is going to come at us and he's going to hit us hard and we set up all our defenses. Then we draw cards blind and find out that, yeah, all of our plans were garbage. They were completely undone by this one thing that we couldn't anticipate. Or maybe they worked out very, very well and um, we over-delivered. Or maybe we just wasted our time and um, valuable resources on something we didn't need to spend. I hate roll to resolve or variations of it. In this case, it's draw to resolve, but random to resolve with a passion. It has ruined so many otherwise wonderful games for me over the years. And yet, I kept coming back to Marvel Champions, even though, for uh, for the record, Marvel Champions would be 10 times better if you got to draw the enemy effects and then decided how you wanted to respond to them, rather than make all your decisions, then draw, and realize, oh, well, this is garbage. Uh, there's no way I could have anticipated that's the one thing that was going to happen. Hate that normally. Hate it here, quite frankly. Wish it was different, and yet still love it. Why? I already said it right up front, folks. Make mine Marvel. Uh, the I, If this had been based on the DC characters, or Wildstorm characters, or Invincible characters, or pretty much anything other than Marvel, I don't think I would have played this game more than a time or two. Thought, oh yeah, here's another game that's uh, really, really good, ruined by... The, maybe the worst mechanism in all of board gaming. Worse than Roll to Move is Roll to Resolve. And yet I love it because of its incredible attention to detail, its amazing thematic verisimilitude for um, one of my favorite things in all of pop culture. I mean, I love me Marvel Comics. I love Star Trek. I, there's a few things. I love Game of Thrones. There's a few big properties that I love with all my heart and soul, and Marvel is probably at the top, which uh, means in spite of myself, and in spite of it, I must love Marvel Champions. And that's number one on the folks. Remember I said, head over to the extended edition, folks. I've got some more to talk about in the post show. Yeah, Marvel Champions, uh, a terrific game. Uh, one that, I, I'm like Richard, I would have, I, if it was any other property, I'd probably look at it as like, oh, okay, uh, I'll get, whatever. But because it was Marvel, gave a shot, and I did enjoy it. Uh, he His love of Marvel is like my love of Star Wars. Like, you put that property on there, I'm definitely going to you know check it out. And, you know, um, if you're around me, beware, I may spoil the ending for our 40-year-old movie. But uh, <laughs> great choice, Richard, for our number one. Any final thoughts, uh, Chris and or Ray, before we get going here? I I think that's a really solid pick. I've never played Marvel Champions. Mm -hmm. I think I also would hate it, and I also think I would love it. Yep. Like, because I know I know it's like so highly regarded. So like it 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 really hits home for me. For me, I just I hate LCGs, and I and yep. I can't go down the LCG yeah. road. I just I just can't do it. Um, CCGs are even worse. But like for LCGs, I'm just like. I, I just stay away. Yeah. Uh, but I, I totally ha have heard from a lot of people that like Marvel Champion. Well, it's it's like number thirty six or like forty three on Board Game Geek's yeah. top ranking yeah, right now. It's up there, yeah, um, which is wild for a, a licensed yeah. game like that. That's yeah. that yeah. in of itself says something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I, I feel like it's actually a really a really nice fitting fitting pick, and I'd give that like a nine point seven five. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Love everything about it. Nine. Nine. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, that's going to do you it for this reference. You got to watch the pre show. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Be sure we're going to record the end of the uh, show now, the post show. Uh, but, folks, thank you again for joining us here on the RR show. I um, want to thank our sponsor, Mayday Games. And until next time, we'll see you later. So long. Bye bye. And we're back for the post show, folks. We have run along. So, 
we're going to get right to it. Let's go to Richard and his uh, picks that didn't make the, the list. Richard, take it away. Okay, you made it to the post show, folks. I'm going to go quick because the gang tends to run long these days and doesn't give us much time for the post show. Uh, but I've got seven more so that I can give you a full top ten. And uh, let's get right to it. Tash Kalar. This is another example of a brilliant head-to-head -head dueling wizard. Another one of my least favorite mechanisms of all time, or settings really, genres let's call them, dueling wizards facing off against each other. But Tash Kalar is brilliant um, because the combat is really kind of abstracted and uh, everything is so ephemeral and temporary. I don't really feel like I'm destroying... Uh, in things that are important to you. I'm just rebuilding my own stuff. It's just on the ruins of your stuff. Neat, neat game. Athlas Duel of Divinity, another. This is the um, the epitome of dudes on a map where we uh, face off and move our troops all over the place trying to destroy our opponent's troops and claim territory. Why do I love it? What uh, puts it over the top? The fact that before the game starts, we spend a deep amount of time building our troops, literally designing them. This is a game that lets you be a game designer, designing your own war game, and then see how well those troops function. I think that's what puts it over the top for me and Jen. Claustrophobia is a brilliant head-to-head... Dungeon crawl game where one player person is the dungeon master trying to destroy all the heroes. The other player controls all the heroes. It's got such smart, smart dice-driven gameplay. It does so many brilliant things with dice. And at the end of the day, it is me and Jen at each other's throats trying to destroy ourselves. But the gameplay is so good. I've always been impressed. It ultimately got replaced by Gloomhaven and I never looked back. But I still loved my time with Claustrophobia. And hey, one more in-your-face punch-em-up game. Tessin is another one like Capo de Copy where we're facing off against each other on a battle line, but this one is real time. We've got our hand of cards and we are playing them as fast as we can um, to our side of the line to try to control all the different uh, lanes and outplaying each other. And, um, you know, when a player plays something, it's going to be, and I can, uh, if I'm holding the right card, I can shout and destroy it before it even gets played. All this kind of stuff is stuff we would normally hate, but somehow Tessin is so charming. We adore it anyway. And now, Oh, and then Asonia is a brilliant deck builder. One of the greatest deck building games of all time. And a lot of times, I have uh, written, had problems with deck builders because they feature a bunch of cards that are kind of in your face and let you mess with your opponent. Asonia does that. And yet, the gameplay itself is so good. The engine building is so strong. One of the best deck builders of all time that I'll allow it. And so, it stays on my list too. Uh, but enough about uh, in your face. Head to heads. There's other reasons I don't like games too, and uh, one of them is uh, typified by dungeon roll. Push your luck is okay. It's I, I generally appreciate it when it's part of some bigger game, but if the whole game is push your luck uh, and nothing else, uh, then I, 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 I could I could take it uh, instead of leave it. But Dungeon Roll bucks that trend. Uh, maybe it's just the absolutely awesome little packaging of the uh, treasure chest that you store all your stuff in, or the wide variety of very asymmetric character powers, or just the speed. Um, I, I think it's absolutely brilliant and criminally overlooked from sadly no longer with us anymore, publisher Tasty Minstrel Games. I always thought Dungeon Roll was the bee's knees. And hey, how about Star Trek Expeditions? This makes the list for a number of reasons. One, it's Roll to Resolve. And oh my gosh, is it Roll to Resolve. It's the rolliest Roll to Resolve you've ever seen. Often you are rolling you know, a, a half a dozen to a dozen dice, trying, hoping to succeed as Kirk or Uhura or whoever as you run around on the planet on an away mission. Um, and also, not for nothing, you spend a lot of time in this game doing effectively pick up and deliver stuff. So that should be a one-two killer blow uh, that makes me hate it. And yet I love it. Um, it is, well, it's from Reiner Knizia. This is so unlike any other game he has ever designed. You should seek it out sometime. And just imagine that it's set in Star Wars instead of Star Trek. And I think you would love it too. Uh, again, you know, the gameplay is great, but like Marvel Champions... It's the setting. It's the fact that this is, uh, except for Star Trek missions, this is the second best Star Trek board game there is. 
period. Um, and, uh, you know, it so captures the feel of Classic Trek. Even though it's set in, um, you know, what's it, the Kelvin universe, it feels like Classic Trek, uh, like an episode come to life. And uh, I loved it to pieces. And so there you go, folks and gang. There's a few more games that I love that I should hate. Back to you. Yeah, I'd heard about Star Trek Expeditions, Richard, and I have definitely, it has, it's on my must play list. You had me at uh, Reiner Knizia, of course, but I'm okay <clears> with uh, rolling dice. I, I love Push Your Luck. Uh, give me all that stuff, and um, I'm happy to try it out. But uh, great uh, games that um, didn't make the list. Uh, Ray, do you have any mm -hmm. ones that you want to talk about before we get out of here? Uh, I had one quick one that was going to be my my fallback if one of my other ones was taken, and that's Alchemists from CGE. Hmm. This okay. is, again, following the, th the thread of I don't typically like deduction games. I don't yeah, like yeah. everyone head down, solve your own puzzle, first person to solve their puzzle first wins. Typically isn't my jam, but this is deduction plus worker placement, which is one of my favorite mechanics. Uh, and it's, it's, I've never really seen that done since Alchemists. Mm -hmm. And I also, it's an app dependent game, which is also yeah. not a killer for me, but it's a, it's a notch in the like yellow column of like, bah, bah. I don't love it when my games need to have yeah. apps. Optional apps are one thing, necessary apps, not my favorite thing in the world, but Alchemist just, it charms me every time you feel like a real life little scientist mm -hmm. and that worker placement element in, in, um, introduces some player interaction that you don't always get in your head down solve this puzzle first type yeah. games nice that's a good pick uh every everybody also needs to have the app as well because you need it for your own little solve little Correct. puzzle solve which is worth I mean, you can worth noting you can you can pass the phone around you, you do don't pass, not pass around. yeah yeah but it is nice to have everyone yeah it feels it. like that just like extends it right yeah yeah, nice. yeah exactly Cool. What about you, Chris? Um, Any? Games I have with... I have twenty four honorable mentions, and I'll get them up here. <laughs> uh, high tide at High Tide Beach, we've got Mike hanging out, um, or maybe you can go to Jim's gym uh, and uh, see Carlos nice. number twenty three. Love us a nineties jock. Uh, yes. Or maybe head over to Eat Snack Shop <gasps> and feast your eyes on Phil. Look oh, at no. Phil. Is that, Phil. The, is that the nerd TM? Phil's like, looking. Or Dave. You'd think Dave would be higher on this ranking. Dave's yeah. only Dave at 21. Is, are these town, supposed to be like teenagers? Um, yeah, I think. Th no, this is. Uh, <laughs> these these are the dream. These are the hunks that <laughs> might have a crush on team? you yeah. in Dreamphone. Yeah. Where's um, Brad? So lucky. Where's Brad? Uh, you know what? Brad's not on the list. He's not on the list. Oh, yeah. poor Brad. Might be a different version. Or maybe <laughs> maybe it was just who, who Montana was playing with. Um yeah. <laughs> and she's like, I love Brad. I was like, that he wasn't in the game. <laughs> you gotta let it go. Um, but uh, though that was BuzzFeed's ranking of the hot meter of all the dream phone hunks. And I love poof, that let me tell you, they only get hotter from there. So uh, <laughs> there's that. That's those are my honorable mentions. Also, uh, this dumb game called Spy Alley. If you've never heard of it, that's uh, <gasps> have you heard of Alley. Spy Alley? I grew up on Spy Alley. Spy Alley. Oh wow. my god, I still have my original copy that's like beaten to yeah. hell. Oh my god! Yeah, it's a good one. Wow. It's over in the corner. Renee will never let me get rid of it because she really I likes it. I love Spy Alley, yeah. and it's and it's oh. solid because like you, it's your your you you've got a secret identity. You're an American yeah. spy, and you need to get the American key, disguise, password, yes. and get to your embassy, right? But the key is at any point somebody can be like, "I think you're the American spy," and if you are, you're out of the game. Like you yeah. just eliminated, uh, but if you're if you're not, they're out of the game. So there's like super high stakes. <laughs> so you might be just collecting all the American. No, it's so stuff. good. And then and then people are like, uh, "Are you the American? I don't know because I'm not willing to guess." But you can sometimes get a free guess if people are going through Spy Alley, which is a section on the board which uh, gets you. It's roll and nice. move, but you also have these move cards that you can save up to like hit certain spots on the board and that's what i that's why i think it hits well because not just roll and move the move cards is like move three so instead of rolling the dice you can choose to move three spaces and like activate a spot and on there's the board, like a little so. social nice. deduction i'm losing my mind at the yeah. spy alley reference <laughs> I, a good, it's my, a good, I want to play now this my is, parents were cool. such saints i played this when i was super super young um, and my parents let you pick what identity you wanted. And I the I always picked the Italian spy because I thought she was the hottest. And my parents were very kind about not guessing, Ray, are you Italian? Until like halfway through the game. Yeah. And that played on loop for like 10 times before I realized I needed to not do that. Um, no, I adore, I adore that's Spy so Alley. That, that is, is so, that's like a yeah. core childhood memory for me. That, that game. is 
amazing so i had to, i had to give that shout out well speaking of disguises yeah. somebody in the chat hornus said hey that person on the left looks like the one from brotherwise maybe it's a disguise maybe it's a disguise you never know, folks. Yeah. Um, okay uh oh uh one game i want to talk about that didn't make my list really close was happy salmon it's so silly oh, but yeah. it's that's a good pick. one of, it's one of the few pick. games i've ranked a 10 yes best game ever i love happy salmon not a 9.7 but a 10 yeah it, it's a it's a wow. full-on 10 although wow. yeah maybe i should rank i, I can re-rank it down to a 9.7 you gotta but, update your bgg stats yeah. so i can yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But happy seven, folks. So if you have never played it before, go play it. It's amazing. Um, that's going to be it for today. Ray, Chris, thank you again for sticking around. I know we've got a little long here, but um, why don't we go raid someone? Uh, looks, like raid. The, looks like my, the my face up. Uh, folks that shut him sit down are playing some ARC. So we're going to go send you all over Yo, there. Hello. So stick around Weird. for, we were just well, talking about later games. Again. Right uh, let's hit the raid button. That's it's going to take a they second. haven't streamed in a while. Yeah. And in mm -hmm. one second, we're going to send you on over there raiding. Thanks, right everybody. Now. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, bye, friends. Bye. Seems like oh, we're raided. Fine. And we're raided. Cool. I will stop streaming.